It's semi-final Friday at the 2023 Memorial Cup presented by Kia. And with the tournament starting to wind down inside the Sandman Center, the stakes have never been higher. The Peterborough Peets, your OHL champs, and the Seattle Thunderbirds, the champions of the WHL, are playing for a spot in the final. And again, we want to thank you so much for watching our continuing coverage of the 2023 Memorial Cup presented by Kia. Laura Dyke and Cheryl Pounder, Craig Button here with you after the hosts. Kamloops Blazers were eliminated last night. We're down to three teams. One of them will be crowned the champions of the CHL for this season. And the Quebec Remparts patiently awaiting their opponent in Sunday's championship final. It is time now for the road to the Memorial Cup presented by Kia, the official automotive partner of the Canadian Hockey League. Kia movement that inspires. Well, tonight's teams couldn't have taken more different paths to the semifinal. The Peets have had to claw their way through the playoffs, knocking off powerhouse teams all along the way. And here in Kamloops, they've staved off elimination not once, but twice. It hasn't been quite as challenging, though, for the Thunderbirds, who pretty much cruise through the WHL playoffs and haven't faced a ton of adversity here either at the Sandman Center. So one of these teams will book their spots in the championship game on Sunday. So we've got another elimination game for us here in Kamloops for the Peets. They're looking to make the final for the seventh time in the last 51 years. Seattle has never made it to a final at the Memorial Cup. So a lot of talent, as usual, on display here. Who are we watching tonight? Well, if you if you need to win a game, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Gonna, no, well, no, but you're going to call Michael Simpson. That's who you're going to call, the goaltender for the Peterborough Peets, because he delivers. He delivers in a massive way. He's done it time and time again, and most recently, on Thursday night against the hometown Blazers. At different times in this game, it looked like the Blazers were going to find a way to win this game. Michael Simpson said, uh-uh, not on my watch, not on my dime, not tonight. And he was brilliant. Great save on Zelliger right before they go down the ice and score the game-winning goal in overtime. He has been phenomenal in these elimination games. He has been phenomenal throughout his time faced with these elimination games. Well, I think Seattle's going to call Dylan Gunther, someone who had the golden goal at the World Junior Championships. Now, he hasn't gotten on the board as of yet, but he did have two assists in the game versus Kamloops, four shots on goal. Listen, this guy knows how to score. He led the team and the league in playoffs with 16 goals and 12 assists, and it's the grade A scoring chances that he did got. You know that he plays with an edge. He's not afraid to get to the paint. Expect him to be net front. He'll be looking for redirects. He will be all over the puck, but he also creates. He's got the gift to see, to manipulate his opponents and to open up space for his line, ba line mates Lambert and as well as Schaefer. So you can expect that this is a guy who's going to be dialed in and will be looking for his first of the tournament. All right, it's time for us to take one last commercial break and then semi-final Friday at the Memorial Cup will officially get underway. Will it be the Peets or the Thunderbirds moving on to face the Remparts for the championship? Puck drop is next. Almost showtime from the Sandman Center and the semi-final between the Peets and the Thunderbirds. Again, a spot in Sunday's championship final up for grabs to face off against the champs from the queue, the Quebec Remparts. They've got the pregame ceremonies going on right here at Sandman Center at Center Ice. Menon Riom and Marie-Philippe Poulin, part of the ceremonial puck drop. We will have the two of them here with us on the desk during the first intermission. Always a lot of fun to talk to them. All right, without further ado, semi-final Friday. Friday starts right now. We've got the singing of the national anthems coming up next. Star Spangled Banner, O Canada here at the Sandman Center. And we will see you again at the intermission. Action packed event. Cooks Jatcham. And now, would you please remove your hats and rise for the singing of the Star Spangled Banner and O Canada with our guest, McKenna Sutherland. Veuillez vous lever, retirez vos chapeaux et casquettes et rejoignez à McKenna Sutherland pour l'interprétation des hymnes nationaux. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets' red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night. That our flag was 
Final Friday at the 2023 Memorial Cup presented by Kia. The hosts are out, only league champs remain, and the Seattle Thunderbirds at Peterborough Peets will duel it out today to find out who moves on to the Memorial Cup Final on Sunday afternoon. Time for the starting goaltenders presented by Cavendish Farms, the official French fry of the Canadian Hockey League. Michael Simpson. Brilliant again. 43 saves against Kamloops in the tie break. In games where he's faced over 40 shots this year, he's 6-1 with a 186 goals against average and a 959 save percentage. And Thomas Millich, great for Canada All-World Juniors long, but his best performance was in the semifinals when he made 43 saves on 45 American shots sent his way en route to a 6-2 win for Team Canada. Rob Wilson, fifth year head coach of the Beats, played in this tournament in 1989, fell short in the semis with the Beats that year. They lost 6 2 to the Swift Current Broncos. There is Matt Odette, head coach of the Seattle Thunderbirds, who are playing in just their second Memorial Cup semifinal in franchise history this evening. Their first came back in 1992 when they were tournament hosts. They lost 8 3 to the Kamloops Blazers. Well, last night's tie break, the first ever overtime in a Memorial Cup tie break, was a thriller. J.R. Avon, the OG hero for the Peets, and less than 24 hours later, we're right back at it for this Memorial Cup semifinal as the Quebec Ramparts watching on. They've already booked their ticket to the final on Sunday afternoon. And as the Seattle Thunderbirds send it down the ice for Michael Simpson out of his net, they played right over to Sam Maia. Buck in front of the Pete's net. Brokop stepping in for the point. And behind the net it goes Lambert. Up high, Korczynski's shot is blocked. Back to Korczynski again. Now off to Brokop. Shot off a of body. And Reed Schaefer sends it right in for the first stoppage of play as Simpson hangs on. Kevin Sawyer, it's time for the Red Rivers tips to win. Well, I'll give you a couple tips first for the Peterborough Peets. Control the blue lines and between the blue lines. It's a huge part of their structure as they try to control the game in the neutral zone. They feel like they can dictate where it's played if they can do that. And for Matt Audette and the Seattle Thunderbirds, clean exits, clean outs. I think it's one area where they feel like they need to be a little bit more efficient against Peterborough. They got the result they wanted, but they felt some details could be sharpened. They'll look to make sure they get out of their zone clean. Always emotion involved when it's an elimination game, and the captain, Lucas Siona, in warm-up had a little bit of gamesmanship going on with Cam Gouvreau. Gouvreau got in a fight against Cam, who's he's a tough customer, so is Lucas Siona, so they're chit-chatting, referees are there to make sure nothing happens. This is after the pregame ceremonies, 
And after that, we don't see it the clip, but they bumped a bit. They kind of smiled, but it was uh, a little bit more gamesmanship. Siona sent a couple different messages here, so a burr under their saddle for sure. These teams, of course, have already seen each other once in the round robin. That was a 6-3 win for the Thunderbirds in the second game of the tournament. Slip move here for Colton Dock as he sends the puck wide. J.R. Avon scored the opening goal in that contest. And Seattle would storm back and would not look back. As it's shot in by Avon. And Nolan Allen carries it around his own net. Gustafson angled off on the boards by Avon. Brian Zanetti plays it in toward Millich, gets out there with the stick. And Jeremy Hansel sets up behind the net. Pass right past Nico Majadovic. That goes for icing. Well, he cut a little short, so we'll get back to that. The, this is the after the ceremonial puck drop. Pay attention to Lucas Siona. Oh, forgot to shake hands, or did he? A little shake, a little message, a little fore or forearm shiver, and then a little gesture towards the jaw area. Remember, Lucas, or pardon me, Spearing broke his jaw twice in the OHL final. And right there, a couple messages sent, maybe saying keep your head up, and you can tell both teams are ready to play. Here's Allen, raise it up the wing. Do you think he was just saying smile, enjoy it? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. There have been two fights in this tournament. They both involved the Peterborough Peets and Kamloops Blazers. Something about the Western Hockey League, the Peterborough Peets here, they haven't seemed to get along quite well. Well, it's a big part of the, the, the DNA of the Peterborough Peets, right? They are a physical team, and the more physical, I think it, they're fine with it. And Rob. Wilson talks about that with us. He says if, if they want to get to the wall and play physical game, that, that just plays into our hand. And I, I think the same is true for Seattle. There's so many similarities between these two teams. Physicality, a big part of both. Here Davidson off the face off, wins it back towards Sir Minio. Krikovic back to Minio, fires a one-timer. Goal was shut by Simpson. Davidson's got no stick as Krikovic picks it up. And hanging on to that tight is Simpson. Jared Davidson has been excellent all tournament long. He's got four points in three games. 13 shots. He's good with his stick, but even without it, as he loses his stick here. He stays in the play and watch. He just kind of keeps body position to buy some time for Krikovic to fold in behind him and get a shot on. That's a tricky one there. You use your defender, the other team's defender, to as a screen and he gets a little tricky one away never over is it for Jared Davidson no stick but the play goes on might be the most effective way to prevent Jared Davidson from scoring goals this season is to take the stick right out of his hands not the Thunderbirds in regular season point scoring back to back 80 point seasons he's the only Thunderbird to do it since 2000 as he comes around the boards Alan Gunther Rolled over for Pickford. Shoots it in. Down the wing. McCoy plays it right back ahead to back at center. Back lays it off. And a shot incoming is handled by Thomas Millich. His first action of the contest as he stops Jack Dubois. So, so every game has its own story. It, it has its own tale. And, and the story of this game for me, first and foremost, is both of these teams are extremely resilient. You look back to last year for Seattle, they fended off six elimination games, and they're going to use that experience in a game like this. This year, the Peterborough Peets winning in overtime in that tiebreaker, that was their fourth elimination game that they faced. Extremely resilient groups, a lot of character, a lot of depth, and boy, you talk about locking horns here, this is gonna be a good one. Down the ice it goes for Maya. Plays it around the boards, Nico Majadovic. Crunched into the boards by Tucker Robertson as the puck spills back out to Shannon for Kevin Korczynski. And Maya off the boards again. Sean Spearing out to center where Prokop collects it. Korczynski off to Prokop. Tipped in by Gustafson. Puck stays in play. Colton Dock back to the corner by Adovic. Tried to slide it out to Gustafson in the slot. Back through center ice again. Broke up. Up to Gustafson. Beats are completing a change. 
Korczynski has been away from back. Kostas it fires it out in front. No shot though on the centering feed. As Hansel not just it right back off the boards. Zanetti makes some contact and spearing up the wing for Hoffman. A uh, nice little play from Seattle to try to get a shot into the middle of the ice, but boy, it's going to be difficult to get anything clean in the guts of the ice. It's priority number one for Peterborough. Back to center, Connor Smith shoots it in. Smith wearing Chris Pronger's old number six for the Peterborough Peets. The collection of NHL greats to come through this Peets organization. Fitting in some ways, a big man. He yeah. plays a big man's game. He's had a couple of thunder hits in this tournament. He's got some nice wheels for a big man, too, as Connor Lockhart sends it toward Millich. And with some traffic in front, he'll just cover that for the whistle. Well, you talk about elimination games, and you talk about Dylan Gunther and how he rises to the top in big moments. Well, how about J.R. Avon? He rises to the top, of course, with the overtime winner last night against Kamloops. That'll be one he'll remember forever, but there's more in an elimination game against the Quebec Ramparts. Of course, two in the final are against North Bay. He's come up with some big game-winning goals to keep his team alive, keep his team charging forward to this Memorial Cup, to this moment here today. Talk about great wheels. J.R. Avon has a great set of them. Two years in a row, the OHL coaches have voted him best skater in the OHL's Eastern Conference. He's undrafted into the NHL, but got an invite to Flyers camp. They liked him so much, they signed him right on the spot. It's a skating man's game, isn't it? If you can skate, you've got a chance. This, the side was covered by Simpson. We saw last year, Herbert Jackye was undrafted into the NHL. He went to Habs camp. They liked him, signed him right away, and what a great player he's turned out to be for him. And he had a heck of a start to the season. He had a, a big fight early in the season, and they are loving him in Montreal for sure. And Look at the, this game, though. The, the tempo of this game, folks, it, it, it's slow, but it's calculated, and that's the way we expected it to be, and it's the way it probably should be, considering that Peterborough isn't going to forecheck unless they really feel like they can get good pressure on the puck. Pay attention to the neutral zone. It's a 1-1-3, and they are going to just challenge Seattle to see if they can navigate through them. Donovan McCoy right in on Millage. The puck bounced back out. McCoy couldn't swat it out of midair as it's Souchin. Just running in over the Pete's line. Smith back up the wing for Avon. Band on it. Korczynski right back up for Gunther behind Smith. Zanetti challenges Gunther to the net. And it's posted up along the end boards as Gunther's tied up. Brinkovic and Davidson passes off to Hansel. Hansel fires the one timer and a good glove save from the Pete's netminder. Seattle's going to have to be extremely patient, and so far the indication is that they are. And when you get an opportunity, you have to make the most of a good defense. Look at the gap from number 14. That's Kevin Korczynski, first rounder of Chicago. He pops the puck up to first rounder for Phoenix, and that's Dylan Gunther. And it's nothing clean. It's probably not going to be overly clean, but you have to take what's given, stay patient, and then when you get grade A opportunities, you have to bury your chances. Davidson versus Beck in the faceoff circle, and Beck wins it back. Can go pro, elevates it off the glass, and it's into the penalty box. Out of play. Well, always enjoy the talks with, with both coaches before every game, and Rob Wilson was excellent. The first thing he said to us, he says, hey, we'll see you Sunday. <laughs> see you Sunday. That, that was the way our meeting started. See you Sunday. So just a real confident group. It wasn't arrogant, but it's just a belief system, right? They didn't start the way they wanted to. Losses to start this tournament. One devastating loss. They've recovered well. Back around the boards. It comes here for Chase Stillman. We'll lift that out to center. Brandon Othman carries it in, but it's offside. Yeah, and, and just back to that, it, it wasn't arrogance at all, but it was just, you know, the, they seem to have the ability to, to cut games off and then start again. I asked him, I says, is this a matter of taking momentum from a big overtime win into this game? He goes, actually, no. He says, just like after you lose a big game, you cut it off, you start again. You win a big game, cut it off, start again, and you just march one day after another. And I, I think that's a big part of the recipe for this team who has just marched through their season. It hasn't been easy, that's been well documented. Suddenly, they find themselves right in the semifinal, a chance to move on. 
Thunderbirds will bring it up to center. Each have faced elimination on four occasions this postseason Memorial Cup. They've won all those games. Similar script to Seattle last year. They had to win six different elimination games to get to the Western Hockey League final before they finally did fall short to the Edmonton Oil Kings a season ago. Thomas Millich. Yeah, if you have to explain that, you can do it with two words. Thomas Millich. He was excellent. The team was excellent, but he was an X factor for sure. So a lot of these Seattle players who last season have been battle tested in the same way that the Pete's have this year. As Sam Maia plays it ahead of Hansel. Reed Schaefer. You know, honestly, that's why I've been so eager for this matchup. You know, is it's because of that resiliency, the battle testedness, where both teams are extremely well coached. Clearly, both teams are playing to their to their structure. A lot of patience in this game, but neither team is going to be pushed off course easily. When, and what I mean by that is off their mental course. They're going to stick with it. Peterborough showed you that with a three-goal recovery to win an overtime against Camels. Here's Donovan McCoy trying to shed the pressure of Reed Schaefer. He's all over him. And the Peets will skate it out to center. Here's Chase LeFave, left side, cross ice, missed the net. Lockhart for LeFave. And then back out it comes for Reed Schaefer. Spruce Grove, Alberta Nato, in over the blue line. McCoy around the boards. Broke off toward the net, cut off by McCoy, and back to center. Marchinsky around the glass. Davidson with Zanetti. Now Dubois. Off to Hayes. And all by himself, he'll chip and chase with Kevin Korczynski. And Korczynski lost his stick. Tucker Robertson will take it away. Back to the line. Can't go for all. Cross ice. Shot from Maya. Well off the mark. Robertson back to the net. And Millich sees that the whole way. He'll hang on tight for the whistle. Still no goals on either side. In the semifinal of the Memorial Cup. Top Prospect Scouting Report is brought to you by Kubota, the official tractor and compact equipment partner of the Canadian Hockey League, as we welcome in our GSN Director of Scouting, Craig Button. Yeah, and our focus is on goaltender Thomas Millich, and his awareness is exceptional. He moves with such an economy of effort and fluid, and he's technically sound. The only thing he lacks is height, and there's nothing he can do to control it. But every other element in his game is sound. He has NHL potential. That is your Kubota scouting report. Well, playoff MVP for the T-Birds. The first goalie to win it in the Western League since Ian Scott. Did it with Prince Albert in 19. But it's the first undrafted WHL playoff MVP since Martin Jones back in 2010 with Calgary Hitman. Of course, he's gone on to forge a pretty good NHL career for himself. Jordan Gustafson plays it ahead toward the corner. Back to throw cop. That's tipped in front of Simpson. And Sam Popovich battling down low. Gavin White takes it away. He makes a nice move to spot Avon up on the wing. Almost give it away. Played right back over to Avon. This is an excellent job from Seattle to create chances that are given or that are available and then to keep the puck alive. It was a good pinch from Luke Prokop to extend offensive zone time. Sam Popovich knocked off the puck by Stillman into the slot. Robertson fires the shot wide. And Luke Prokop back out of the corner. Skips it through center rice right in towards Simpson. That was a little close for comfort, but he shot it out of the goal crease and back to center. I would have backhanded that to the top corner. <laughs> Scary. You sure you wouldn't have found a way to miss the net from that? <laughs> <laughs> well played, buddy. <laughs> well played. Dump in the corner and cycle. <laughs> There's a hit from Cam Goldbro. That's going to draw the first penalty of the game. And the gloves are off. Nolan Allen and Goldbro. Here we go. And Govro was the one of the combatants in the warm-up that was talking with Siona. Oh, the linesman got in the way. Linesman Maxim Desjardins, Brian Burkoff break it up before Allen and Govro could start throwing hands. 
Listen, they, the linesman may have done a favor for Seattle as Nolan Allen is a really key part of the Seattle defense. The last thing you need in these elimination games is for one of your top defensemen to get hurt, but he's going in to stand up for his teammate because of that right there. It was Govro that attacks Davidson from behind. He goes into the boards dangerously, and right there, it's Allen with the gloves off. No question right there. Oof. Thankfully, Davidson's okay. It's that dangerous area, isn't it? Two, three feet away from the boards. A tough one, though, because Davidson's going straight into the boards, and, and you learn at a young age where you, you find an angle to the puck into the boards rather than going directly into them. So Davidson, thankfully, he's up. He's okay, and it looks to me like they'll be offsetting minors. I, now, I believe the players drop the gloves. They don't actually throw punches. It's just two minutes for delay a game on either side. And Govro will get the, the initial penalty, of course, for that, I think, a cross-check onto Davidson. So it'll be a power play here for Seattle. So Connor Lockhart will go and serve the extra two. So it's two for unsportsmanlike for Allen and Govro for dropping the gloves. But well, it'll be interesting to see how, how this game progresses. We're not quite halfway through the first period. We showed you the game's been chipping warm up and at the ceremonial puck drop. And now it's continuing into this game. Power play Seattle, see if they can do anything with it. Off the face off and toward the end boards. Ryan Chinetti had to take it away. Got their back to the line for Korczynski. Off to Brad Lambert. Korczynski forgot their Davidson fires the shot wide. Brad Lambert again off the hash marks to Kevin Korczynski. Gunther, fans on that one timer. Sean Sperry passes over to J.R. Avon, one on two. He'll accelerate in over the line. Poked away by Kevin Korczynski as here comes Brad Lambert the other way. Drops it for Schaefer. Piro his way around the lane and sends a shot off the shoulder of Simpson. Davidson with it. Off to Lambert. Creeping in toward the corner. Up to Davidson. Dylan Gunther for Korczynski. Lambert again. Down low. Schaefer was there. Never got the shot. How about the sweet hands on Schaefer? Wow. Here's Kevin Korczynski. Off to Lambert. Off the wing. Fires that shot right off the calf of Connor Smith. Lambert. Now Korczynski. And Gunther with it. Donovan McCoy angles him toward the corner boards. Davidson digs it free. Round it comes. Jonathan Malia is there. On the boards. Korczynski off to Gunther. And that stop. Simpson got just enough of it. Backing away at it along the near side. Korczynski comes back out to him. Gunther hangs on and takes the shot. Back around it comes for Lambert. 20 seconds to go on the minor as Gunther looks to play it over to Davidson. Back to Korczynski. Korczynski shoots again, and that's redirected in front. Lambert sends that one just wide of the net. Good pressure here for the T-Birds as Gunther. Back up by again to Korczynski. Off to Lambert. Takes a shot high as Simpson. Out of the box is Connor Lockhart. Even strength five on five, one shot on the power play for Seattle. One shot, and they had to have had seven or eight shot attempts. So a good variety. I like that, but you have to find a way to hit the net, right? There's going to be a rebound if you do. They had one good chance and a lot of missed opportunities, but all in all, pretty on good power play. Keats will bring it back out to the center. Brennan Offman stopping. Passes off, looking for Lockhart. It's redirected by the stick at Jeremy Hansel and high over the glass out of play. First power play opportunity for Seattle, but they can't strike. They stay tied at zero. Hey. Well, you might notice a new addition to the Seattle Thunderbirds jerseys during this Memorial Cup tournament. They're wearing Doc Blue patches on their chest to honor longtime team doctor, Dr. Alfred Blue, who passed away on April 25th of this year. He'd been the team doctor for a long time since 1963 for a Seattle junior team dating all the way back to the totems. That's five decades of service to Seattle junior hockey. The team medical room is named in his honor, and he's on everyone's mind during this Memorial Cup run. A really important part of the team, Victor. 
Yeah, yeah, just another part of what makes junior hockey so great. So many people behind the scenes that make it possible. Our thoughts you know, to the Seattle organization and the Blue family. Peterborough Peets, lost a longtime scout this year, too, just after training camp. Ron Ringler, who got patches on the back of their helmets to commemorate him. So many important figures behind so many of these franchises that hold it all together is Avery Hayes. Sausage a pass up for Maye. We'll dump it into the corner. Kevin Korczynski slammed into the end boards with Maye. Comes back out. Here's Hayes. Hesitates, shoots, and it's blocked in front by Popovich. Off the glass and down the ice for Gavin White. Plays it to center. And in it comes off the end boards. Milich off to Hansel. Now Kyle Grinkovic. And off the glass again. Out to Siona. Trying to swing it toward the net. McCoy. Caught up with Doc. Back off to McCoy. And he was looking for Stillman. Back to the point. Hansel. Brought around by Zanetti. Trying to shake the pressure. Finds McCoy. Backhand. Glove down by Siona. Lucas Siona carries it in behind Simpson and then plays it right back around to the near side. Jeremy Hansel coming to by Stillman. Siona off to Allen. Allen shoots. And finding that with the glove is Michael Simpson as he gets the stoppage. Well, Peterborough is taunting Seattle to dump the puck, and they do. And the, if you're going to do that, you have to make sure you're really clean on your outs. It was McCoy that coughed it up once, and that almost parlayed into a really good chance for Seattle will still score this. The CHL on TSN is brought to you by Go RV in Canada. Find your wildhood. Well, Peterborough is really patient in the neutral zone, so they're, they're giving Seattle an opportunity to dump a lot of pucks in. So you have to retrieve them, and then you have to be clean with pucks. And so far, Peterborough has been just average at that. They've given it away for free a couple of different times, and that is flirting with dangerous in a big way here is a ton of offensive zone time is in the hands of Seattle. You let them linger around there long enough and don't take care of the puck. Soon enough, you'll be digging it out of your net. Off the face off, Peterborough will control it. Zipped down the ice by Jonathan Malee. And that's going to go for icing here with 5.51 to go in the first. Peterborough has allowed 40 or more shots in three of their four games in this tournament so far. They've been outshot in three of their four games in this tournament. The only time they weren't was against Quebec, who plays a similar style, right, where they're very patient. They're not going to force offense. And it's a game plan. They don't care about that metric, right? Rob Wilson doesn't care about all the analytics. What he does care about is the number on the board when the buzzer goes at the end of the game. They've got a game plan, and it's clear they're sticking to it. Shots 10-4 to 4 in favor of Seattle, and most of the game is being played to our right so far. Here's Dylan Gunther. Back to the line of comes. Pickford couldn't handle it. Sawyer Minio will chop it along the boards. Comes to center ice with Jack Dubois. Lost it in his feet though. Sancho takes it away. And hands off for Reed Schaefer. One hand to the head. He's knocked off his feet by Maya. And battle away in the corner. Schaefer out to Pickford. Off to Minio. Shot bouncing off a couple legs there. Dylan Gunther looking for Schaefer. Now Pickford. Off to Minio. And hit the stick of Lockhart. And Jack Subois bringing it ahead. Maye over to Malie. He'll shoot it in. And now Luke Prokop from behind his own net. Off the blade of Dark Rikovic. Siona settles it down. Siona zips that one in right past Simpson. Here's Cam Govro. Knocked down by Greg Kovic. Off the boards. Avon ran into Siona as he comes right back around. Milich thought about playing it. Off the believe it. 
Pass from Hayes redirected to Zanetti at the line. Cut off now by Korczynski. Up the wing. Avery Hayes backhands it ahead for Avon. He'll just tip it in. Well, a really good breakout. I was talking about how they need to be clean. Peter World does, and they do that. And then later in the same shift, they give it away for free twice. They have not been consistent. I don't think they've taken care of the puck near, near close enough to how they want to in this game so far. Maya off the boards that hit Nolan Allen and ends up in the Pete's bench right beside the backup netminder Liam Shushka. So what Peterborough wants it to look like is this. All five guys, no real pressure, but we're going to be in shot lanes. We're going to take care of the middle of the ice. We're not going to give up any grade A opportunity. Shot, block, box out, outnumber, and watch this little pass to the middle of the ice. Perfect. Clean. Exit. That's what it should look like, but it just hasn't been consistent enough. I think Rob Wilson would probably agree they've spent too much time in their own zone because of self-inflicted wounds, but that last one was picture perfect. Three rack for the faceoff. The Owen Beck versus Colton Dock. That's Seattle control. Nolan Allen. Off the Gustafson, a good look and a great save by Michael Simpson. As Gustafson back toward the corner, lays it up the wing. Doc looking for Hansel. Pressured by Hoffman. Back ahead for Hoffman. He couldn't quite handle it. If he did, he would have had a two on one with Stillman. Now Chase Stillman takes the puck. Off the back, he shoots and he hits the crossbar. As Milic took a bump in front, lost his glove. Play comes to a halt. 55% of the faceoff dot last game was Seattle and clean win. And watch this. One seam has been broken in this game. That was it. And look at the great A opportunity off the stick of Gustafson. And then opportunistic teams know how to counter or counter. And look at this. No glove for Milic as there's contact net front. Nolan Allen comes in, takes out the man, but he also takes out the glove for Milic as well. And that puck goes glove side, crossbar, and out. Wow. Here's Schaefer back off the boards. New center. Maya chasing back. It's called for icing, but that puck took a bit of a strange bounce off a run. They actually will bring this face off back to center. Well, resiliency and an underdog mentality to say the least. They were tied for 26, Peterborough was in the CHL for points, and they crept into the playoffs. That's all you really need, isn't it? It's a new season when the playoff start it's four rounds it's 16 wins to get to where you want to be add in a couple more wins here at the memorial cup you find yourself as an underdog in the semi-finals what a road and what a journey it's been those point total in the regular season in the ohl since the 1981 kitchener rangers to go on to win a championship in that league rangers that year out brian bellows among others I haven't seen a run like this in over 40 some years Back out to Robertson. Passed off to Hayes. Chipping it in. Pass for Chinsky. Gunther. And there's an injured player behind the play. It's Avery Hayes who's down on the ice for the Peets. And it was from an elbow and an errant one from his line mate, Tucker Robertson. Of course, it was wasn't deliberate I, I think it was anyways is a malfunction at the junction both players collide on the forecheck and boy Hayes looked to me like he may have been out he just laid there motionless they're gonna take their time here I think back up to one knee and back to his feet under his own power that's a great sign oh is it ever and how devastating that would be Took it right in the jaw, and it was pretty sure Tucker Robertson who was down in behind the net as he was spinning to try to, I think, avoid contact. So here's the forecheck coming from both sides. Oh, left elbow, bam, right on the button, and Hayes is down. Poof. I'm pretty sure that doesn't feel good. Yeah, flying elbow from out of nowhere. And that one came unexpected for Avery Hayes, but good to see him back to the bench under his own power. And hopefully back on the ice here shortly for the Peets is Maye. In the end boards, Owen Beck has it now. 
Passing ahead for Stillman. Stillman with it again. Shedding the pressure. Passes off hands and just hammers it right back in. Off the glove, rather blocker of Simpson. And now Smith. Head on the wing. Tipped in by Offman. Davidson. Now Allen. Here's Hansel. Makes a move to the middle. Hansel off on the wing. Davidson towards Simpson. Pat save for Kovic was wide open in front, but Zanetti cut it off. And back through center. Allen backtracking with Offen. Takes it away. Offen shoots. And his world junior teammate Thomas Millich makes the save. Now Jared Davidson with some space. Gives it right off of Jack Dubois. Back to the corner for Hansel. Allen up for Myadovic. Myadovic carries around the net for Korczynski. Korczynski shoots. That was deflected. And Simpson makes a save. One thirteen to go in the first. First intermission show right around the corner. Marie Philippe Boulam and Henri Ohm stopping by with Laura Sherrill and Craig. Having a disco up there. I was going to say it. Well, Craig's get dressed for it at least. No he doubt about that. Increased the lighting budget for the weekend, apparently. Just mirrors Craig looking better today than ever before so far this week. Fantastic. What a heck of a coat he's got on. Here's a centering pass for Gustafson. That would Karen's wide. And out of play. Well, there's been a lot of opportunities to get the puck to the net, but nothing overly clean. Maybe a couple of them, and just right here, come from behind the net, and wow, that went close. Gustafson is a sneaky player offensively, down to the one knee, and hard to get the chances from the gut of the ice. There's, hasn't been many, maybe two. That one being the most dangerous for sure. Battle for it off to face off. Up the glass to center. Maya to tries to shoot it in. And that'll roll toward the corner for Maya. It's checked by Doc. And glass it out from Smith to center. Avon says it right off of Minio. Back to Smith. Bouncing puck, flattened by Gustafson. Couple moves here as he's working it around back to his forehand. Minio at the line. Backhand pass finds Myadovic. Myadovic to Minio. Cross ice Korczynski. Turning away for the pressure from Lockhart, who's all over him. Prize it free, sends it to center. And knocked down again by Dylan Gunther. Here's Brokaw, fires it, and missed the pass, but it doesn't matter. The first period has come to an end. Well, some chances on either side. Crossbar for the Peterborough Peets, but at the end of it all, we're 0-0 after the first. semi-final between Peterborough and Seattle. 0-0 after 20. Let's hear from the Peets. Sean Spearing with our Julia Tacheri. Sean, scoreless through 20 minutes. What did you make of the first period? Yeah, it was a, it was a tight oh, tracking right. period. I mean, I think both teams are trying to settle in. It's obviously a big game, so I think we're both just trying to find our structure and uh, play both of our ways, and uh, yeah, it was just a tight period. What did it look like when your team finds their structure? Yeah, I think we're pretty uh, we're a pretty laid back team. I mean, we let the game come to us. We uh, we like to trap up the neutral zone and we like to uh, capitalize off mistakes. So, I mean, I think 0-0 is a successful first period, especially in this barn, and uh, we got to continue with our game. Okay, so jaw wired shut. You're doing this interview. Also, a lot of chirping, chirping at the opening faceoff circle. You don't know these two teams, this team very well, but definitely a lot of animosity. Yeah, honestly, that guy's just a loser, to be honest with you. Um, 
No other way to put it. <laughs> He's just a loser. Thank you. Good luck in, in the three, second. No worries. Two. Okay, this semifinal's getting spicy. So this was the ceremonial puck drop. Marie Philippe Poulin, Ben Oriol, and Lucas Siona and Spearing and and I guess that's what Spearing was referring to, Craig. Yeah, I guess it was. I mean, I'm just trying to watch it and see what's going on. I mean, you heard what uh, Spearing had to say, call him a loser. And now what he hopes is that he can call him a loser at the end of the game, <laughs> literally. <laughs> is it time for the second period? <laughs> okay, zeros on the board. Craig, Cheryl, Laura back here with you once again. And kind of the first period we were expecting because we've got Seattle coming off an off day. The Peds needing overtime to make it to the semifinal, the second game of a back-to-back -back for them. When it comes to the Peds defense, though, tested in that opening period, and I guess the win is that it's still zeros on the board, Cheryl. Well, yeah, and that's their identity. You know that they've got to play to structure. Rob Wilson has talked to you about over and over again that they've got to play a systematic game, and that means they're trapping in the neutral zone. They're also playing the 1-1-3, one, one, so they want to contend the neutral zone. They want to force the dump in because they want to play along the boards. Because they respect that they've got physical players that can protect the middle of the ice. It's all about having a good stick steer, recognizing when your opponent is isolated, and that's when you can attack, that's when you can pressure. They do not play man on man unless they recognize that they can gain access to that puck and get it out. A lot of the time, when they dump that puck in, that is when they have the trap through the neutral zone. When they do have the puck on entry, they will put it in deep, they will attack, that's when they will forecheck, when they recognize that they can have some speed. So they're working in layers right now, but they're doing their job. They're going to be opportunistic and try and keep this score low. And something that, Cheryl, you brought up in the pregame was how the team can gain so much confidence when you've got a goaltender like Michael Simpson there, kind of your last resort. And, you know, he's been used to facing a ton of shots. I mean, in that series against London, he faced 29 or more in all six games. I mean, the shots right now, 14 to 5 after the first period, Craig. Yeah, so, you, you know, the goaltender, all, obviously his job is to stop the puck and keep it out of the net. But sometimes it's just to calm things down and it's to clean up the mistakes in and around them. We got a sequence right here where Peterborough has the puck on their stick and McCoy comes out, it's under control, it gives it away. Now Sione gets the puck and now it go, they go to work now. Then they get the puck again and then Brian Zanetti with the puck, he gives it away. And then who has to come and save the day literally and figuratively? This is the giveaway. And then Michael Simpson just says, okay, this all stops right here, right now. No more problems. And that's what a goaltender does. He, he stabilizes you, too. He just says, okay, we're in trouble. Panicky. Guys are giving away the puck. We're going to make sure now that we don't extend this opportunity for the Seattle Thunderbirds. And he wasn't swimming in his crease. Just those quiet, quiet feet pushing side to side so no panic in his game. A low event period to be sure when you don't have any goals to talk about it and not many penalties either. I know there those offsetting ones, but special teams again in a game like this, so important, Craig. Well, I, I mean, Kevin Sawyer talked about it during the broadcast. He said it's great. That, I mean, the Seattle Thunderbirds were in the zone the whole time and they had one shot on goal on this power play. They kept missing the net. They kept misfiring. So shot attempts don't matter when you're not hitting the net because now you don't force the defenders to turn around, try to find the puck. The goaltender has to worry about rebounds. So the Seattle Thunderbirds, you can have the puck all you want in the offensive zone, but if you're not getting it onto the net and into the crease area, it doesn't matter how much you control the puck. That was a power play where possession was great and how they took advantage of their possession was really, really poor. I'm ready for the second period, as we said, after that Sean Spearing interview. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. We know how big a game this one is here today with a spot on the final on the line. Got a lot of big guests today as well. Connor Bedard started things off in our pregame. And next up, Menon Riom and Marie Philippe Poulin will join us on the set. Manon Rayom's trailblazing career began in 1984 when she became the first female goaltender to play for a boys' team. Rayom, big stop, rebound! Her career with the women's national team included Olympic silver and two world championships. Here's Marie Philippe Poulet. She shoots! Oh! She said she scored! Poulet said it went in the net! This game is over! The buzzer! Canada has won gold! 
and all of a sudden it became ladies' night at the Memorial Cup. Menon Rayon, Marie-Philippe Poulin joining us here on the set. And apparently there were two memos sent out. Victor, Kevin, and Craig got one of them, and then the three of you got the other one. All white. The boys are all in blue Black and they're all in white. Okay, Laura, well, next I might time. As well just, I might as well just go home. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. What brings the two of you to Kamloops here today? Yeah, we're lucky enough to get invited to the Memorial Cup. Uh, we had a leadership panel today. We were able to discuss a little bit where the women's hockey is going, where hockey is all around. And tomorrow we have a little clinic tomorrow morning with girls hockey. So it's always fun to be able to travel around Canada, really share our passion, which is women's hockey. Not good. But well, Pooh, you know, you're one of those athletes. I mean, you've done so much within the game. You've scored in every Olympic final that you've played in. And in 2010, you had two goals. How is, how have you been able to embrace that kind of pressure? Everyone knows you as Captain Clutch. What do you do before a game? Do you breathe? Do you work with someone? Everyone in Canada wants to know, how do you do it? I do breathe. <laughs> I hope she breathes, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I did learn to manage that. I'm not going to lie, 2010 after that Olympics, uh, you realize there's a lot of pressure right away. Uh, but I think you grow, you surround yourself with, with the teammates, with friends. Uh, you become a little bit more vulnerable. And I think when you, you lean yourself on people that you, have, you trust, I think it makes, uh, even, it makes it easier. And I think over the last couple of years, I, I think I grew not only as a player, but I think as a person. Uh, the leadership group we have in this team, that the group we have, uh, the, the coaches, uh, I think that this whole gang has been amazing to work with, and I think as a person, it just made me grow and uh, mature even more. Now, Manon, you're such a trailblazer, and, and we saw a little bit of your career there in that vignette just before we brought you on camera here. And, you know, you go back to 1993, and I know you've spoken about this a lot, when you became the first woman to make an appearance in one of the four major North American sports. At the time, did you realize how significant that was? Because here we are some <clears throat> some years later, <laughs> and that hasn't happened again. You know, I didn't have any idea what would happen after I played that game. I was just there to, to play the game. And uh, it took me years to realize that my story had an impact on people. Either some parents would come up to me and said, like, you're such an inspiration for my daughter, or my son did a project in you in school. So that's when I realized that that story had an impact on people. And But at that time, I was just playing hockey. I mean, you look the same. <laughs> yeah, she does look the same. She looks fantastic. I actually played with you in 1994, and for the first time, you brought visibility to the game. So everyone knows Marie-Philippe Poulain's name now. So thank you for that, Poulain, and everything you've done. But for you, Menon, I mean, for me, I would walk to the rink and there would be young girls asking for your autograph. So you were kind of that first, the visibility. What did that mean to you and how have you seen that change over the years? You know, at that time, you're just like going through the moment, you have those people come up and, and I realized more ago how important it is to t pay attention to the young people that come up, that knowing that you're making a difference in their life and being a role model for them was so important because when I started to play, I never saw women playing in the NHL. I never saw women's hockey, so my idol was NHL guys. And that's why after that, when I realized my story had an impact, I knew that was important for me to give back to the game and be an inspiration for some young girls. So Poulain, what can we expect with the PWHPA and the vision of a league for you and the great athletes that play the game? Yes, uh, I think we're all aware we've been pushing very hard for the last couple of years and it is in the making. We truly believe that's going to be happening uh, in the next couple of months uh, uh, to, to get a league together, not only for ourselves, but the next generation. But we know that we have the right people in place that's been working hours and hours to put this together be be behind closed door because we know uh, we truly believe that women's uh, sport is very important. It's about time. So we keep saying, if you put women's sports on TV, people are going to watch because the, the entertainment level and the quality of play, it is top notch. And it's, uh, it's a long time coming. We appreciate you joining us. Too bad we have to say goodbye. See, this is what we were talking about. This was gray blue suit day and white blazer day. And, and I'm like, let's wear bright pink. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. All right, second period of the semifinal is coming up. Well, the cadence of that first period wasn't at a high rate, and that's because of the four check or the lack thereof. This is part of the game. We've seen it through the course of the tournament. Peterborough allows access. They force the other team to dump the puck. If you're going to do that, you have to take care of it. I, I thought they'd give the puck away for free way too many times. Outshot 15, 14 to 5, and to me, it's just a matter of time before guys like Gunter and guys like Brad Lambert are going to take advantage. Seattle knew that they weren't going to get easy ice in the middle of the ice so they took what was given rapid fire shots 
And you know what, though? The other side of it is Peterborough doesn't need many chances. They are opportunistic. One off the crossbar. You see Othman there as a quick little stick and a couple dangerous chances. We're still scoreless. More of the chances have come from Seattle, but maybe the most dangerous chances, two of them, came from Peterborough. And there you saw Avery Hayes back on the bench for the Peterborough Pete. So good to see him seemingly okay after taking that elbow from his own teammate late in the first period of play. Shots out to the first for 14 to 5 in favor of the Seattle Thunderbirds. But the Peets won't seem to mind. They have played from behind. They've been outshot many times throughout this postseason run. But at the end of it all, they've managed to win their way into this semifinal, which is all that matters as we get an early stoppage 17 seconds in. That's so nice to see guys around the CHL see each other for the first time. You make friends in your own league, and of course, you make new friends when you meet new people, right? Look at Sionis making new friends <laughs> right here, isn't he? Hey, real popular guy. Before the game even started, the ceremonial puck drop, and. All right, so if you missed it, you missed the best interview we've had so far all tournament. <laughs> Julia Teixeira asking Sean Spearing what was going on in the pregame and referring to Lucas Siona said flat out he's a loser. <laughs> Maybe he was talking about what he hopes to be the end result of this game. I don't know. But you know what? Again, it's junior hockey and, and like the momentum swings and the raw emotion and the fireworks. I mean, entertaining hockey at its finest. It's been a great tournament and this one's going to be an interesting one here as these teams are playing safe, playing cautious, but no shortage of emotion. Millich out of his net. Hey, hey, Comes around toward the near side corner. There's Lucas Siona. Written to the boards by Avon as he comes around for Carlton Kovic. Off to Luke Prokop now. Passing over to Davidson. Rebound out, and the puck stays out. Michael Simpson got down to stop Lucas Siona. He'll play it right back down low to Davidson. Jared Davidson back to the line. Gorchitsky over to Prokop. Krikovic. Prokop again fires the shot. And another save made by Simpson. So it's drifted toward the net. Siona back behind for Davidson. Avery Hayes rides with Siona in the corner. Back down the ice it goes for Nolan Allen. We've seen Jared Davidson shoot the puck. He, he's got a blistering shot, and sometimes you shoot, you, you'll take it if you can score, but it's maybe what happens after the shot. It's so hard to control the rebound. It spits right out into another dangerous chance, and it was Lucas Siona that ripped one right back at Simpson. Here's Chase Stillman. Down the wing. Tries to drag the shot through Allen. Take it by Majadovic, ahead through the neutral zone it goes for Zanetti, off the boards. Cut off by Allen, he's got it again. Majadovic shoots, Simpson, another save. It's been pretty busy here in the first two minutes of period number two. That's yeah, starting to open up and you wondered if it was just a matter of time. Seattle has been sharking around the offensive zone and here early in the second, they get some good chances. Shot, rebound, and look at that, went off the plumbing and out. Simpson was beat, but the post weren't. Look at that. You, Davidson can rip it and the, that loser kid Siona. <laughs> I shouldn't go there. He can shoot it too. He's a big man. He kept the puck alive and they're looking to win it. Trying to get an early goal here. Have you ever called a loser before Kevin in Western Hockey League? I, I wish that was all. I wish that was all. <laughs> That's gentle. Oh, you had your buddy Steve Passmore drop by oh, first intervention Stevie. as well to just, remind you how great you are. <laughs> Never lets me down in that regard. Stevie and I grew up in Grand Forks, British Columbia together. He went on to play in the Western Hockey League and ultimately the NHL. And I'll tell you, never lost for words, I guess, would be one way I could explain Stephen. See, these two teams, not shy. These two player or players, teams, whatever, they can trip each other all they want. No one's going to rip you better than your teammates. It's a sign of camaraderie is what it is. When they stop, you should be worried. There's Dylan Gunther at the center. You trying to tell me something, Kevin? <laughs> when I tell you about your, your coat, <laughs> my way of saying I like you. <laughs> I have been getting it all week. Is Donovan McCoy out of the corner for Connor Lockhart. No, no, no. McCoy back through center. Pickford, not for Gunther. 
Reed Schaefer off the boards for Popovich. Back across for Pickford. And for Schaefer. Pushing around. Dylan got there by the hash marks. To the net. Now let's skip just wide. Bumped down by Davidson. Here Davidson centers. And Lucas Siona gets a good look. Hard shot from Prokop and Simpson. Excellent to start this period as it's chipped up over the glass. And Avery Hayes will go to the box for Peterborough. Shot mentality, rapid fire for Seattle, and they don't score. On Peterborough, minor penalty, delay game. But they get rewarded with that. It's their second power play of this game. It all started with that shot mentality. It's Jared Davidson just put the puck to the net, son. So from that, or pardon me, it's, it's still in Gunther. Look at the screen net front from Schaefer. So now you recover a puck on the body and you keep going. It was Prokop that eventually stepped into another one and under pressure, under siege, Avery Hayes puts it up and over, second power play for Seattle. Thunderbirds registered just one shot, although they tried many others on the first one. As Siona, back to the front of the net, taken away by Spearing. Peter Jeremy Hans with gloves it down and center. He's out there with Doc Soutjen, Brinkovic and Siona. Here's Kyle Grikova hitting the line with speed. Dog. And boys, Grikova tried to center. Seltzer was there. He's got it now. Back out high for Siona. Bobbled it. Does well to hold it in. And Colton Dock keeps it moving. Back to the line for Hansel. Here's Dock. Siona. Up high to Hansel. Grikova. And the faceoff dot takes a shot off the stick of Simpson. And a broken stick here by the line. It's Colton Dock. He's got it tied up. And in the process, he'll get a new stick right off the bench. Convenient placement there. <laughs> got enough time right there to change the skate. After that little pit stop, the Seattle Thunderbirds will bring it back in over the line. Jonathan Malee. The wing. Krikova holds it in. John Spearing, chance to clear, shoots it out to Jeremy Hansel. About 30 seconds to go on the delay a game minor as this play is offside at the Peterborough line. Kyle Krinkovic has been really noticeable. Four goals in this Memorial Cup tournament so far, and it was down below the net that he was the second quick, and the puck ends up stopping and he was the first one there to keep it alive and it led to this secondary chance. He's looking top corner over the blocker of Simpson. He missed it just by an inch. That line and he has been a big part of it. They've been dangerous offensively. Well, Kevin Korczynski off to Jared Davidson. Shoots it in. And it comes for Connor Smith. Locked up along the boards. Donovan McCoy shoots it around down the ice. Won't be much more time left on this Thunderbird power play here. Five seconds till Avery Hayes is out of the box. Here's Brad Lambert. Lambert turns it back. It's cut off. Tucker Robertson passes off. Down the wing, Hayes. Centers in Millich. Steps the door on Avon. No shots on that last power play for Seattle. They're 0 for 2 with one shot on the night. Here's Jared Davidson handling it over the line. Sails the shot just wide. There's Brad Lambert. Put it into the slot. Robertson's there. I'm not sure that I haven't seen Jared Davidson shoot the puck that it hasn't been reasonably dangerous or had a chance to cause at least chaos. The puck comes off his stick sizzling. What a release. Here's Jordan Gustafson in past everyone. Meets Davin White behind the net. Maye's there. Off the boards, back to Nolan Allen. Allen across, hard shot for Minio. And square to that is Michael Simpson. Boy, has he been great to start this second period of play. Shots now 21 to 8 in favor of the Thunderbirds, but the score stays tied at zero. The CHL on TSN is proudly presented by BetRivers.com. It's a whole new game. Michael Simpson set the tone with 
as crafty of a save as you'll see in the tiebreaker against Kamloops. Look at this behind the back. I called it wizardry, a little bit of puck magic. And it's pretty easy to see where he got it from. This is his current assistant coach, Andrew Werner, back in his playing days. Spent a number of years in Germany and Austria. They called him the magician back then. Dressed for the part. And now he's an assistant coach with the Peterborough Peets. Also functions as Michael Simpson's goalie coach. And apparently able to transfer some of that magic over to Michael Simpson, who's been brilliant again so far tonight. Here's Allen. Shots blocked by Owen Beck. Of course, Andrew Werner himself is a former Peterborough Pete. Played for the Peets in the early 90s. Now he's been a longtime member of this organization. His assistant coach, goalie coach, reached it to his interim head coach. As the Thunderbirds come out of their own zone to center, there's a hard hit from Chase Skillman on Kyle Trinkovic. Knew that was due at some point tonight. Chase Stillman taking a run. Got a good piece of Krikovic there. He knows who he is. Stillman plays to his identity. We've seen that where he can change the tide of a game. Off the board is Donovan McCoy. Toward the net. Davidson tipped it. Smith plays it back around. Brennan Othman. Carries it toward the slot. Othman's shot is blocked by Allen. But settles it down at center. Scoring chances 11 to 2 in this period so far in favor of Seattle, but for the first time some sustained offensive zone time for Peterborough. They're starting to count. Here's Dubois stepped into by Allen. Connor Lockhart in over the line. Lockhart drops it back. Hard shot from Lee. That flutters high. Gustafson off the dock. In it goes. Simpson out of his net. Out to center, Pickford backtracking. Sawyer Minigo. Dock up the wing. Shoveled in by Myadovic. Simpson out to play it. Well, Dock was looking to take Donovan McCoy right through the backboards. Just missed. And Donovan McCoy will take it here to the line. Dock gloves it down. Stays with it. Dock shoots. And the rebound comes out toward the faceoff. Dot boards it out for Donovan McCoy. And this goes for Ison. Well, a temperature to this game before it even started, and you knew that physicality was going to be a part of it. 61 on 61, and right there, Kinkovic was slipped out of this hit at the very last second with Stillman right in front of his bench. So an impactful hit, but the location as well, sending a message to the other team and maybe one to his own bench as well. Different ways to get your team fired up. You did it last game, and a shift where he's trying to do it again. Here's Lockhart off the boards through center. Kevin Korczynski. Souchin lost it. And in it comes for Sam Maye. Rolled up the boards. Moline touched over to Lockhart. Gently in. And off the boards for Kevin Korczynski. Gunther. Drifting up for Schaefer. Taken in by Souchin. Towards it back out through center again. You think about a, a patient game like, like we're seeing, so not a ton of great day opportunities, and it's going to be a, a low scoring game by all looks of this so far. And it makes it even more interesting knowing that you have two playoff MVPs in net at one end of the ice and the other. You know that both of those young men will be motivated to outplay one another. It's going to come down potentially to one shot. That will be the difference in this game. Which shot will it be? 10 42 to go in the first. There's Matt Odette, the coach of the Seattle Thunderbirds. Talked to him about Gunther and Lambert and he said, you know, it's not always the stat line that tells their game. But they do have to produce. Craig Button talked about that. They, they are point getters. But it's not all about that. And you got to make sure that the other areas of your game are good when you're not scoring. And then, well, we've seen it so many times when, when elite players don't score and then they get one. Usually many follow. So that's what Seattle's hoping for. For the Gunther and Lambert, who get to score a goal in this tournament. We see some shifts here, Kevin, with Grayson Souchin playing up the middle between Reed Schaefer 
and Dylan Gunther as Jared Davidson takes a shot. That's held on to for the whistle by Simpson. Uh, Brad Lambert and, and Dylan Gunther are, are elite, elite players. Both first round draft picks into the National Hockey League. They play alongside with Reed Schaefer and the line is combined for no goals. Two assists each for a combined total of six. 13 shots for Dylan Gunther. He's had his chances, but at the end of the day, chances are just that unless you light the, le or light the red lamp. We know that Dylan Gunther can rise to the occasion in big moments, the golden goal. He's a guy that doesn't get rattled by expectation or pressure, so keep an eye on number 71, see if he can break the game open. He hasn't scored in four games, and the last time he went on a goalless road of more than four in his junior hockey career it was in October of 2019. He's been the mark of goal scoring consistency as Siona takes a shot. Back out it comes toward the slot. And out through center. Race for it here. Owen Beck will pick it up. Beck off the wing. Plays it across for Osman. And he didn't get all of it on the tip. Couldn't direct it on target. The Samaye from the line. And Millich reels this in. He'll cover it up. Over halfway through this Memorial Cup semifinal, we're still searching for our first goal tonight. All right, an elite goalie matchup happening in this game. Thomas Millich and Michael Simpson, both of them respective playoff MVPs in the WHL and OHL, but also a very good year matchup between these two. They both have cartoons on their helmets. Now, Michael Simpson is fairly obvious. His last name is Simpson. He's got Bart on his helmet. Millich, a little bit more confusing. He's got a couple minions on the back of his helmet. I asked him about it pregame. He just started laughing. He said it was honestly kind of random, but then the kids started to really like it. So now he's bought in. So, Victor, it started as a little bit of a bit, but now it's for the kids. <laughs> uh, you love to see it. No shortage of creative setups every year we come to the Memorial Cup with the goaltenders. They get better with it every year. As Nico Majadovic rushing down the wing, plays it off to Sawyer Minio. And boards it out from Connor Lockhart. And a whistle here at center on a hand pass. Seattle has been really good on face-offs. It's a strength of theirs. But even when you lose a face-off, it's not always a loss if you're on your toes. And Niko Majadovic starts on time. And look at this. Out of his own zone, clearly off a face-off loss. And it turns into a three-on-two chance. It never comes to. But regardless, you make sure that you're on your toes. Start on the green light, and you get the puck for free. Brad Lambert has to take this face-off once again with Dylan Gunther and Reed Schaefer. Lambert plays it ahead for Gunther. Smith lifting it in. And the puck rolling on its edge. This will go for icing. And the big strength all season long for the Peterborough Pete's cabin has been on faceoffs. Yeah, they, they have been an extremely good faceoff team. Their top three centermen have been 60% or better. It's a little bit more difficult in this tournament. You look at Tucker Roberts, and he's 48% in the tournament. But you're going up against the best in the country. So that number naturally will drop. Seattle's been good on this on the dot tonight. Seattle beat them by two face-off wins in the round robin meeting. It's just the second time up to that point that the Peets have been outdrawn on face-offs in the playoffs. As broke off off the Gorchinsky looking cross ice, missed the mark. Lambert's got it. And throws that pass away. And all the way down the ice for Thomas Millage. Gorchinsky. Between his legs, Avon gets taken down as it's curled around the boards. Connor Smith hit from the line. Hayes back to McCoy. McCoy shot off a skate that was blocked by Gunther. And now Lambert through center with Korczynski. Back to center ice. Gunther's got it again. Here's Dylan Gunther through to the slot. Staying with it. Gunther trying to go to the backhand. Poked away by Simpson and the box back out through center. Now Jeremy Hansel wheeling ahead. On the blue line, run into. And raced along the boards as Donovan McCoy takes it from Peterborough. And the street line down the wing. Good stick for Reed Schaefer. Schaefer goes back to the bench to complete the change. Sion out there with Davidson and Klikovic. As this puck will go for icing. 
I mentioned Dylan Gunther, 13 shots, no goals to show for it. Well, he's much more than just a scorer. He's played 33 games in the NHL, so he knows how to play the right way. Shot lane, block shot, puck recovery, and now you get going northward and then in tight. Everybody's within five feet of the puck, but he comes out of that pile and makes a nice little play as he turns the corner on a defender, and he's that close to tucking a backhand in behind Simpson. Good active stick from Simpson to keep that puck out of trouble. Now the Western Hockey League in playoff goals, 16 this postseason, set a Thunderbird record. Hard shot from Jeremy Hansel, and fired that wide. Back it comes, Hansel's got to recover at center, off it all over him, and down he goes. And as the Thunderbirds come back in over the line, no Smith or no stick here for Smith. As Simpson makes a big stop on Davidson. Rikovic centers to the point. Hands Olin. Another save for the Peterborough netminder. Stillman's lost his helmet. Rikovic's got it off to Davidson. And Michael Simpson makes another stop for the Peets. Just peppering Simpson with 27 shots now in the game. And how huge has Simpson been for his team? Under siege at times. And that's a through slot pass to a one-timer for maybe the best shooter in this game Davidson lets the one-timer go look at that little five-foot pass to Davidson again and confidently hydraulically Simpson out to challenge and he makes the save no second chance controls the rebound he has been everything and more that his team could expect from him tonight not just making saves making difficult saves and for the most part controlling the rebounds while doing it Dock to take the face off against Jax Dubois. And Mai passes over. Mali out to center. Here's Dubois stripped of it. Mali takes it back and deposits it into the Seattle zone. Millich. Bit of an awkward play there as it was taken away by the Peets. Gavin White from the line. Brings it down low. Sharp angle. And off the pot of Millich. Mayanovic ahead to Gustafson at center. Charging in over the line, Gustafson pushed to the outside by Maye and nudged right off the puck by Mali. Back around and that it comes for White. There's Gustafson with White and Doc. Back to Jeremy Hansel, fakes the shot. Now Korczynski. Maye out of it, rolled on him. Maye ushers it ahead for the Peets. Brought down. And cross ice it comes in front of the penalty box for Hayes. Jonathan Malie works it in. And Jeremy Hansel. Let's go t bird can't get started now at Sandman Center as Doc has that one just roll right in on Simpson for an easy stop. 28 shots on net so far and we're just past the halfway point of this game and Michael Simpson has been excellent all season long and then when the pressure's at its highest in elimination games how good has he been four wins you see the saves that he's made in those two against North Bay of course against Quebec in the round robin and of course that tiebreaker last night 43 saves to put the hometown Kamloops Blazers out of the tournament he has been an X Factor, fantastic player for his team, playoff MVP. All those games, by the way, Kevin, one goal spread. So that and that says something, right? Because it's it's pressure. That adds more pressure where you know it's it's one mistake and the game's over. And that's what makes this game so interesting. Because you got two goaltenders that are complete gamers in this. And think about the, the anxiety wrapped around a team that's dominating offensively. You're getting all of these chances. The goaltender's making saves. So now you're building confidence for your team. And how many times have you seen it where it's the other team opportunistically gets the first goal and it just pops the bubble, all momentum out of the game. The CHL on TSN is brought to you by Go RV in Canada. Find your wildhood. Seattle Thunderbirds assistant coach right there. Carter Cochran, his first year with the organization, just welcomed the newest member of his family to the world. 9 a.m. local time, Thursday morning, back in Seattle. This is Carter, his partner Carly, and the newest addition, baby girl Noah. 
And note I did say back in Seattle he was here on Wednesday night was on the bench for the game hitched a ride with former Thunderbird and Kamloops native Ryan Gropp <laughs> was there for the birth of his child back here tonight on the bench again for the Thunderbirds. Well congratulations to him and so what you're telling telling me he's got some things going on. <laughs> Lots going on right now for Carter Cochran who is a native himself of Kamloops British Columbia. It was nice to hitch a ride from a former teammate, or in this case, a former Thunderbird, too, and Ryan Gropp. As it comes out through center ice, Kevin Korczynski skates it right back in. Jared Davidson and to swing it across. Ryan and Nolan Allen. And Kovic. Or Allen takes a shot. Gloved down by Simpson. Quite remarkable to, to think about the emotional control, right? Where you, we talked about it a couple times, where the fireworks before the the game, the comments between intermission and Lucas Sioni in the middle of it all, but not crossing the line. You know what I mean? Maybe you want to get in the heads of your opponents. Both teams are very, very strong mentally, and, and I appreciate the fact that you can try to intimidate or try to agitate, but you don't cross the line emotionally yourself. So far, it's been a very responsible, safe. Mature game from both teams. Almost turned over in front. This puck does come out to center. As Owen back draws it back into his own zone. Chase Stillman is across the ice, cut off by Schaefer. Just in over the line, Gunther off the Hansel. Hansel into the front of the net, redirected. Out it comes. Gunther shoots and he hits the post. Good luck for Dylan Gunther. He's had a couple tonight. And this time the iron helps out the beats as Hansel holds it in. Brad Lambert shoots. That stop is it's off the end boards. And Lambert goes back to the point. Broca for Gunther. Swept in and around it comes for Lambert. Jeremy Hansel now is Seattle. Midway through a change. Mayanovic shot. Still loose. And Simpson. It's in. Last to touch it. Hawk sits it in and the Thunderbirds finally break through. Well, it took 31 shots before Seattle was able to solve Simpson, who has been absolutely brilliant in this match so far, but that rebound was less than brilliant. He has not given up very many of them, but it was a shot. He came out to challenge, but that rebound spits to the right, and Brad Lambert, who hasn't had a goal in this tournament, comes up with a big one. It's not necessarily gorgeous. Off the backhand, it finds a way in the five hole, and I think it goes off the left leg of a sprawling Michael Simpson. That is a big one for Seattle to get that first goal after all of the chances that they have generated for themselves. 31 shots to 11 in favor of Seattle, and they get the first goal. And they automatically review every goal in this tournament. We have a we have a good goal on the ice. The previous play is under review. And I believe they're looking at it for offside because it's Maxime Desjardins, the linesman, who has the headset on right now, Kevin. So we'll take a minute to look this one over. If it stands, will be Brad Lambert's first for the tournament. He had six in the playoffs for the Thunderbirds. Came over midway through after he was reassigned after the World Juniors by the Winnipeg Jets, where he started the year in the AHL. Started the year in the AHL and his training camp in Winnipeg, he looked like he belonged. There was people around town saying that he might be an NHLer. That wasn't going to happen, but he looked excellent and. This is going to be reviewed. It is being reviewed for offside and it's be awfully close. This this one is every every goal gets reviewed. And then if they're not sure, of course, they take an extra look at it. That's exactly what the linesmen are doing right now. Desjardins. And Burkoff are checking it out. It's on the far wall right in front of the Seattle bench where the play in question occurred and it was Dylan Gunther that I believe kept the puck alive with his right skate. See Kevin the thing with this is that 
Seattle was in the zone for so long it's hard to remember at what point this offside might have come. As it looks like a decision has been made. We have a good goal on the ice. I will announce it, okay? Uh, after review, the play was onside. We have a good goal. Well, after the review, no. it's Dylan Gunther that, that was able to keep this puck alive. That might have been what they were looking at with Jeremy Hansel from the blue line. But at the end of the day, it is a goal for Rod Lambert, Seattle Thunderbirds. And wait a moment for confirmation, but they've got their one goal lead. The final five minutes now, period number two against the Pinro Peets. Here's Doc. At the center, off to Nico Bajadovic. Back to the corner, out it comes for Doc. Minio at the line. Pickford, at the leg of Lockhart. And the Peter repeats needing to find a way here to beat Thomas Billix. They've only sent 11 shots his way thus far. As Bajadovic skates it in, off to Gustafson, sends that off the outside of the net. Jonathan Malie spots it out to center. Korczynski at the skate of Doc. Colton Doc through the middle. Off to Siona. And sends out one high and out of play. Go back to that offside. I, I was fooled. I was wrong. I said it was Gunther on the far wall in front of the Seattle Thunderbirds bench. It was, in fact, this play. We showed it quickly. And, boy, how close is that? As Hansel pulls his lower hand back to keep this thing alive. Just what a great look at that. So the, good for the linesman to take the time to review it to get the call right. Look at the other, look at the goal. It was as a result of that onside play from Hansel, from Brad Lambert. One nothing is where we stand. Robertson versus Davidson in the face out circle. Seattle win it back. Korczynski stumbled there, and the Peets bring it down the ice with Avery Hayes. J.R. Avon. Now it comes to Cam Gopro from the line, blocked by Davidson. Back toward the corner. Hayes pushes it around. Zanetti is there. He's into the slot, claimed by Krinkovic, and out to center. Siona with Davidson. Davidson over to Korczynski, back in front, wanted Siona, and he knocked right into Michael Simpson. Cam Govro is over there with Siona. Those two exchange words as the Peets back through center, carried in with Avon. And Nolan Allen directs it aside. He broke out the pass that was intended for Avery Hayes. Rinkovic lost it as he crossed the line. Dylan no Gunther one. rips it right back in. Simpson left it behind for McCoy. Up the wing, Stillman. Now Thomas Village to Allen. McCoy looking to play it down low. Comes right back out to Lambert. Brad Lambert off to Schaefer. Stillman back through the neutral zone. With one touch from Hoffman to Owen Beck. Back. Up high, Offman shot, blocked away by Millich. And now Jeremy Hansel is tied up with Smith and Stillman. Hansel passes off to Schaefer. Schaefer looking ahead, picked off by Beck. Beck shoots, rebound off of Nolan Allen and toward the corner for Brennan Offman. Another shot from Smith and Millich sees that one the whole way. Well, a couple of really good plays, and one was offensive and one was defensive. It was Siona, who's been around the action all, all game long, and it's a good clean breakout. Head man the puck from Krinkovic, and look at the way Siona gives the puck up, and then where does he go? Well, where he lifts, net front, and then he almost redirects that one with his backhand, and that was Govro, who they were chirping in warm-up, and then you look at this last chance. Lambert is all alone on the right side, and that defensive play from Peterborough kept this puck out of danger. You wonder now Lambert's got a little confidence. He's got a goal. Gunther's had some excellent opportunities as well. You get the sense that their best skilled players are starting to feel it. 
from center ice. Simpson leaves it behind the net for Maya. Knocked down the ice. And Minio lays it around for Zanetti. Lyadovic goes down. Plays it back on the end boards. Minio forces back up the wall. McCoy's at the line. Here's Maya coming in, shoots, Millich the save, and the rebound's clear toward the hash marks. Sent back in front, the lead fans on it. McCoy at the point. McCoy moving in on the wing. Skates it around and cycles back to the corner for Maya. Sparing partner down low. Maya backhand pass up high. Avon shoots. Millich the save. Rebound is taken by Seattle and poked out to center. Oh, here's Maya. Back down ice. Millich out of the net. Watch out. Art VR Avon all over him as Pickford recovered. Centered and just passed Avon off the pass from Robertson. Jordan Gustafson in the neutral zone dumps it in. Siona battling with Maye. Davidson and Smith both in there. That's his Tucker Robertson now. And they get up on the back side of the net as time runs out. Period runs down to zero. Well, it took us a while, but Seattle finally got their first of the game. The only goal this game for Brad Lambert. They lead 1-0 after two. Seattle Thunderbirds are on the board here in the semifinal. The goal coming courtesy of Brad Lambert. And here he is with Julia. Brad, your first of the tournament, you break the ice in a really close game. Could it have come at a better time? Uh, yeah, no, it's a uh, great, great timing. And, you know, we got a one goal lead now, so uh, we got to hold on to it in the third. And, you know, just keep playing our game, uh, playing the O zone, and uh, you know, I think that's the best way to protect the lead. What have you noticed about the way this Peterborough team plays so far? Uh, yeah, they play hard. They try to play physical. Uh, I think we just have to match that physicality and uh, you know get pucks behind them and maintain O zone time. Pretty emotional game out there. Lots of animosity between these two teams. How do you make sure that doesn't get in the way of the game in this third period? Uh, yeah, just uh, play between the whistles. Nothing extra, and uh, don't take any stupid penalties. So uh, try to stay out of the box and play our game. Thanks, Brad. Good luck in the third. Thank you. All right, we are at the admission again with Craig, Cheryl, and Laura. So one nothing score here on the board. Brad Lambert scores, and we're like, okay, we finally got one. And then there was a lengthy review, but yes, it was upheld. No offside. And for Brad Lambert, you know, he had such a wonderful playoffs, but a very quiet Memorial Cup. And, you know, we were kind of talking about Dylan Gunther and how this could be the perfect time for him to get his first here in Kamloops. Well, it was Brad Lambert doing the honors. Well, great timing, isn't it? When you're out shooting a team 31 to 16, you find the back of the net. That is critical, and it's got to feel good for Brad Lambert getting his first of the tournament. But this all comes off of pressure in the offensive zone. Craig Button said it best when he said, listen, when you get shots on the net, guess what? The coverage has to turn. The moment the coverage has to turn and start to chase the puck they lose positioning they come outside of the middle of the ice and that's exactly what happens is there's multiple shots put to the net and of course then there becomes a scramble and on the play it's going to be brad lambert off of the myatovic shot that is there to bury the rebound i mean you can't blame simpson on this one who pushes across looks for the puck and almost gets his rebound but it's Lambert, you can see the fist pumps and how happy he is about that. So when you're trying to get within the interior of the ice, you gotta get that coverage moving. The best way to do it is get a shot to net. Those rebounds cause, create, cause havoc. Perfect example of getting the puck to the net then hunting a loose puck. Brad Lambert hunts the loose puck, one nothing Seattle. 
Michael Simpson continues to be one of the major stories here for this semifinal. 31 shots that he's faced. They finally get one by him there. But yeah, if it wasn't for Bra or if it wasn't for Michael Simpson, the score would be you know four, five, six, nothing at this point. Well, there's a reason why we were talking about him in pregame as well. I mean, when he faces elimination, he has been absolutely excellent. Staved off four elimination games now, and now he's in one. He knows that he's got to hold down the fort for his team. He knows that they're likely going to be outshot, and he wants that timely save. All all those saves so that his team can find a way to get going the other way and be opportunistic. He is their lifeline right now. He's doing everything he can. He's tracking pucks. He's anticipating and he's keeping his team in the game. There is no question about it. He's confident. He's at the top of his crease. That paddle save was unbelievable. How about anticipation with that push across to be able to make that save? Well, the thing about Michael Simpson, too, you just watch him here between whistles. He's calm, cool, collected. I mean, there's no fuss with him. He knows what the next task is, stop the next shot. And, you know, you just consider the comportment and just the, how he settles himself, you know, between whistles and not and during the game. Very, very impressive stuff from Michael Simpson. Again, Michael Simpson 4-0 this season when facing elimination, including twice here in the barn at the Sandman Center. We talk about special teams, we, something we mentioned there in the first period. When you look at the stats, okay, of the three remaining teams, we've got Seattle, worst power play. You've got the Peets, the worst PK. But again, those can be deceiving. You throw that out the window because it all matters what's happening right now. And right now, that Peets PK is performing top notch. Or the worst power play is, is revealing itself <laughs> it's once revealing again, itself, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right, Laura. I mean, the PK comes around, and you know they gave up one shot on the first PK, none on the second one, and we can talk all about the shots and not getting shots to the net and possession, but at the end of it all, the Peterborough Beats are really comfortable in their positioning, winning faceoffs, making sure that they ensure that there's no opportunity for second chances. And the first one, Seattle had a lot of possession time in the offensive zone the second one Peter Bro did a lot better job of getting the puck and shooting it down the ice so you know this is one of those things where teams are always adjusting on the special teams right now Peter Bro is winning this with the only two power plays of the game for Seattle they haven't buckled one bit well, and it's not just about pressuring it in all areas of the ice. I think Peterborough is doing a real good job with their stick. I mean, it's one of the most critical pieces of a PK to take away time, space, push your opponent. When there's a rim, attack the puck. And that's exactly what they've done. And only allowed one shot on those two power plays. You know, it has been a physical game, right? Like, you know, everyone's finishing their checks. There's a little extra stuff, but not a lot of penalties. We had the offsetting ones in the first period and then a couple going uh, the Pete's way there in the second and the first as well. So that is where we stand right now, one nothing. The CHL will honor its brightest stars from this past season tomorrow at their annual awards event. We'll preview three of the biggest categories when our intermission continues from campus. From the Memorial Cup to the Memorial. Yes, our coverage of the PGA Tour continues here on TSN and CTV tomorrow as golfers stick to the green for third round action. It all gets underway at 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. Well, tomorrow will be a total off day for this tournament for the Memorial Cup. Why? Well, as tradition here, you hand out the CHL awards on the Saturday. We're going to give you a little preview of that and talk about the three biggest awards. So starting with the David Branch Player of the Year Award, Connor Bedard, safe to say, is the front runner for that award. And he's actually nominated for two other awards as well, the top prospect as well as the top scorer award. And no player has won all three in the same season since they started handing out the awards in 1994. So why, I, I'm not betting against him winning yeah. all three. I mean, we know he's the top and scorer. We, want, yeah. we know he's the best player I in the CHL Jeff. this Here year. And he's the best prospect. <laughs> so guess what? Like without jumping it, I mean, he is going to win all three and he's the he's the best player in the CHL this year. And there's so many good players. Matthew Maggio with Windsor, Mark Savard, who's such an excellent coach. But it, let's let look at Bedard here and the abilities that he has. And then you have, Matthew Maggio, who, who just had a fantastic season under Mark Savard. Mark Savard was a brilliant offensive player and really encouraging that. And Jordan Dumais with the Halifax Mooseheads. I mean, 
he'll be on the world junior team next year by all measures and certainly you look at all across the league three players that had three fantastic seasons and speaking of the world juniors having worked them and watched firsthand Carner and Berdard work as magic I mean 71 goals this season uh, it's just so impressive but I watched him play in August and then again in December January and it was unbelievable to watch him I mean there's a game plan against him every time he steps on the ice and he finds a way to adjust to it whether he's got two on him he can read the ice he's got incredible vision I also love the way he'll actually skate away from the net only to identify how he's going to attack the net and pick off his opponents he's been it, unbelievable it, I, I've seen him play in every month of the year and every month of the year he's pretty darn good oh he just seems to <laughs> elevate doesn't take a month off right <laughs> and ice in his veins how about we go to defenseman of the year now and for the first time in CHL NHL history one team one NHL team has all three nominees the Anaheim Ducks well represented here yeah and, and and rightfully so i mean we've seen olin zelliger here with the Kamloops blazers but pavel minchikov a, a brilliant defenseman with the ottawa 67s he was with the saginaw spirit before moving over there but we've seen so much of olin zelliger in this tournament the world junior he's been fantastic there's pavel minchikov who went over to the ottawa 67s a, an excellent offensive player and then tristan luno with gatineau just across the river of ottawa and he was the first overall pick in the Quebec draft and he's really elevated his game to the point now not only the best defenseman in the Quebec League but nominated for best defenseman in the CHL. Well with Olin Zellweger I've just been so impressed the way he uses the middle of the ice when he comes to the middle of the ice in particular on the power with speed and he has options he's pretty incredible 32 goals this season for a defender and to be quarterbacking on the power play tons of minutes as well. Last but certainly not least, the goaltender of the year, and we're watching one of the nominees here tonight, that being Thomas Millich. Yeah, I mean, the playoff MVP in the Western Hockey League as well. We saw what he did for Team Canada at the World Junior. Dominic DeVicentis with North Bay, phenomenal year. There's Thomas Millich. Listen, Canada doesn't win the World Junior gold without his brilliance. That's how good he was. Dominic DeVicentis with North Bay, fantastic year. Took them all the way to Game 7 before losing to the Peterborough Peets. And then you have Nathan Darvo with the Victoria about Tigers another fantastic year there these goaltenders are all so brilliant and really backstop their team literally pun intended to real success this season and during our coverage of Sunday's final we will be showing you who won the big events but meanwhile still to come here at number three Seattle with the one nothing lead Back in Kamloops for the start of the third period in this semi-final at the Memorial Cup. Brad Lambert, the only goal so far, 50-32 of the second period for Miko Majadovic and Jeremy Hansel. Back in the broadcast booth, it is the Light Blues brothers. And Kevin, this game has had a bit of a slow build to it, hasn't it? We didn't see any goals yep. in the first. We saw one in the second, and the Seattle Thunderbirds continue to press. I like the way you describe a slow build for sure. And a lot of a maturity and patience in the game. You knew it was going to be a patient game for Peterborough. I have liked the maturity from Seattle where they have taken their shots, but they haven't really forced for offense. They've taken what's given. They're out shooting Peterborough 31 to 16 but they're out chancing them 18 to four. And how good has Simpson been where he's out fronting shots for the most part, he's controlling rebounds and putting those into safe places. That one he didn't and it cost him. He's been near perfect in this game. Look at the variety of shots from Seattle where they shoot from range if they have to, but they always seem to have a second layer and answer for a rebound if a rebound is there to be had. You knew it was going to be a low event game if both teams were playing at their best. I think Peter Roll has been a little bit sloppy with the puck, and they're down by a goal. We'll see if a team that plays patient will find a way to press here down by a goal. This is not unfamiliar territory for the Peets as Reed Schaefer takes it away in an early test 15 seconds into the start of the third period for Michael Simpson. Well, right on cue, we're talking about Michael Simpson, the OHL MVP of the playoffs, and watch his positioning on this save. He's reading the play before the play happens. It's never over. Turnover. Look at how far out he is. That's a confident save. It takes the angle away from Reed Schaefer. Push. Right now, the puck is leaving the zone, but it doesn't. A turnover. And he's ready for a worst case scenario. Good hockey IQ and anticipating a shot. Beck versus Davidson on the faceoff here, and Davidson wins it back for Nolan Allen. McCoy. Lost it behind the net. Jared Davidson skates it up. Tipped on by Greg Harman. And Siona can't put it through. What a look for him on the doorstep. 
as Offit takes it. Sent off a body and off the board through to center. There's McCoy. Played into the slot. McCoy's got it back. Chase Stillman pulls it in. Jeremy Hansel. Passed off and off the glass. Siona plays it back. Dog Corkscrewed screwed into the ice as this puck goes for icing. Seattle has infested the net with shots from the beginning of this game and started this third period. It's been no different. Look at that. Siona has Simpson down and out and a rebound. Spin to your forehand and make sure that your stick is in shooting position. This is excellent skill net front. Siona lives there. He, he spends most of his time net front. I, I like his understanding of who he is. Wait for the shot, push, and put yourself in a position to shoot a rebound, and he misses on the outside of the net by an inch. Tucker Robertson and Colton Dock in the faceoff dot. And locked up off the draw. It's won back by Dock. Here's Jeremy Hansel. Take it away. He's off the boards to White. That shot's drifted wide for Kovic. Siona charging ahead. He's got it now. Tried to center. Here's Greg Kovic. Back in for Dock, and they score! And once again, Siona, Krikovic, and Dock connect, and the Thunderbirds are up two to nothing. Well, infesting the net area again with bodies and with shots. Nice little exit there. Krikovic headmans the puck, a broken play, but Siona delays enough to recover the puck. And look at that. Is it looks like Krinkovic is obligated to the shot, and he just sends a luscious little pass through the crease. Nobody's home as Doc has a freebie. The four by six gaping, and now early in this third period, they extend their lead to two. Out from center. Comes it for Pickford. Off to Korczynski. And over the line is Dock. Jonathan Malie. Back out to the neutral zone. Malie. Over the line. Who's at the side directed on by Chase Stillman. Get over the line. Here's Colton Dock. Who's at the side directed on by Chase Stillman. Back out to the neutral zone. Malie. Over the line. Who's at the side directed on by Chase Stillman. And back it over the line. Here's Colton Dock. Colton Dock passes across and by Adamick had all day to shoot that, but he lost the handle on it. Simpson couldn't get over. Another great opportunity. Not even three and a bit minutes into this third period, and the Thunderbirds have had a number of great looks. Colton Dock can, can sleep at times and be unnoticed in the game, and all of a sudden he can be a complete force. He's had 12 shots in his last two games coming into this one. He has that goal off a beautiful pass from Krinkovic, and then in the same shift, he has this chance. Look at the way he's on his offside, a little pass, and it bounces on Mayadovic at the very last second. And Wilson talked to us before the game, and I love this. He said when they were down 4-1 in the last game against Kamloops, he said to his group, guys, if we don't allow one more goal, we're going to win this game. If we allow a goal, it's over. We cannot allow one more goal when they were down by three goals. And sure enough, they come back and win in overtime. They're down by two, so of course, anxiety is a part of this. It's a do or die, but you get the sense that this team is not going to panic. Been here, done that. Beats came back against Kamloops. They managed to do it before the end of the second. As here's Offman, he scores! Brendan Offman jump started the comeback in the tie break, and he's got the deficit down to one against Seattle in the semis. He did cue the comeback against Kamloops, and here he is on cue, a, a team that's patient and opportunistic. A broken play, shoot it to the net, and then just a good job. Look at the recoveries above the puck force a couple of different turnovers a backhand no look you roll the dice and Yahtzee it's Othman 
opens the five hole from Milic and he draws this game back within one. Second of the tournament for Brennan Hoffman. A minute 13 between goals as Seattle and Peterborough go back and forth to start the period. Here's Avon across. Robertson looking for a shot. Warded away by Milic. Saw Seattle go back to back. Eight seconds apart in their last game. And the Peterborough Peets nearly replicating the feet right there as Luke Brokop stops it behind the net. Here's Brad Lambert skating in. Dodges Tucker Robertson and another hit. Gorchinski off the gut. They're back across. Oh, and Simpson got enough. It's Brad Lambert off the wing. What a gorgeous play that was for the Seattle Thunderbirds. What a start to this third period. Is out to center. Tucker Robertson has Maye. Off to Maye. Millich the save. And right back to center ice comes Reed Schaefer. Lost the handle on it. Who said this was a low event game? Unreal end to end action. Supercharged start to this third period. As here's Gavin White now over the line. Beats have some energy in their step now. As it's into the corner for Lucas Siona. Off the boards, Brian Zanetti flies up on him. Lucas Siona. Through center ice. Siona for Greg Kohler. Simpson makes the save in the rematch. Beard off the boards. Pickford to Minio. Off the boards. Zanetti. Tied up. Comes out loose. Lifted to center by Jonathan Malie. Now Davidson. Shot right off the shin guard of White. Drinkovic up the wing. Nolan Allen. One timer from Hansel. And Simpson shuts the door. Jack Dubois passes off. Pete's had to be careful. Almost too many men. And they will successfully complete, complete the change and dump it in while they're at it. Dangerously close to too many men. Matt Odette was screaming on the Thunderbirds bench, calling for it. it oh. shoots it in. <laughs> Doc is tied up with Dobro. Gustafson slammed to the boards by Beck. He's got it. Plays it out in front of his own net. And Seattle will look to settle it down. They do. Here's Doc. Dillman was all over him. Can't go throw. Trying to lift it off the glass and out. Beck passes across to Hoffman. Here comes Brennan Hoffman. Shoots and kicked away by Millich. Go throw. Actually stick right into the corner as the Thunderbirds take it away. Down ice by Adamick. Passes off. Allen makes a move. Where is it? Simpson made the save. As he was backing into the net, the whistle sounds and a crowd draws along the end boards. This one shift rivals nearly the entire amount of chances in the entire game as we go end to end. This is the last one as Simpson tucks the glove behind the five hole. He's not sure. Does he have it? And at the other end, it was Millich who comes up. This was a sequence that went 200 feet by 200 feet. Huge save on the one time we made it look easy. Then Brad Lambert, look at the way he's prancing into the offensive zone. A little leave from Korczynski on. Oh my goodness, it's Lambert with the return favor. One timer. What you can do, I can do better, Simpson says. And then Millich counter punches. Back and back we go. I need a breath, Vic, because this has been electric. Both goaltenders, both MVPs of the playoffs in their respective leagues. And you understand why from one shift. Someone's going to have to check on the replay department after that sequence. Goodness. Enough highlights here at the start of the third period at five minutes that we seemingly had in the first 40. Is here Schaefer looking for another chance. Buck was deflected high in the net off a stick. Down ice comes J.R. Avon. Left side. Defended by Korczynski. Brad Lambert. Through center ice, smooth skating Brad Lambert. Kept it at the point, Korczynski up the middle, Schaefer, and a great defensive play at the last second from Donovan McCoy. Redirects the puck, high and out of play.
Plenty of chances. Couple goals too. Colton Dock and Brennan Othman go a minute 13 apart. 2-1 lead for Seattle. Well, Michael Simpson active early in period number three, and he is our Real Canadian Superstore save of the game, save for real at Real Canadian Superstore. It's been a hard game, and maybe the hardest part was choosing which save was the save of the game, but we decided on Michael Simpson on that one in the last shift. A one-timer, point blank, right pad save for Michael Simpson. He stopped 20, 19 of 21 shots. Pardon me, 36 of 38, and that is your Real Canadian Superstore save of the game. Still 13-38 to go in the third. Might have to make a couple others here. If Peterborough will have any incentive coming back. Bryce Pickford. There's a save off a tip from Ciota in front. It pops up and brought down by Kukovic. Ciota trying to work it up the wing. Pops out for Sam Maia. Guided over to Lefebvre. He shoots it in from center. Millich will come out to play it. Around it goes for Siona. Now Pickford. With Kovic. Kovic back to Pickford. Right on. Riva. Oh, and another stop from Simpson. This, this game's 7 6 if not for these two goaltenders. You've got highlight reel saves to last a season in one period. Magic Michael Simpson. Shows up again is Jeremy Hansel. Passes ahead for Mayadovic. Down the wing. Off the dock. Shot off a body. Dock toward the corner. Comes out for Owen Beck. Now Mayadovic off the boards. Gustafson sends it into the beat zone. Stillman shoots it toward the corner. Hansel. Off the boards, Owen back through the middle, passes off, and there's a good look. Brian Zanetti pulling the trigger. It's back, right back to Millich. He made two saves. Good and Hoffman for the rebound goal. It's Nolan Allen back to the corner, watched closely by Hoffman. Gustafson evades Tucker Robertson. Jordan Gustafson cutting across the slot. Driving in on his backhand, and Eddie boxed him out. Broke up, under pressure from Avon. Knocked down to the ice is Lambert. Up to center, passed ahead. Avon couldn't field it clean. And Allen directs it off the boards to the neutral zone. Back in for Prokop. Over to his pairing partner, Colin Allen. Allen. Smacks the puck off the board. Schaefer's got his man tied up. That's Avon. Hayes swirls it around for Donovan McCoy. Lambert out of the corner. Misses Schaefer with the pass. It'll slide all the way down the ice. And not enough for icing. Tucker Robertson up for Avery Hayes. Avon was changing. And Sawyer Minio with it. Now Donovan McCoy off the glass through center. Bouncing puck for Sawyer Minio. Here's Dylan Gunther. Gunther passes it through to Davidson. Here's Rick Kovic to the net. Bouncing puck. Simpson's down. Is it in? Yes! The Thunderbirds have scored! Fluttering puck on the line. And the T-Birds are up by two again. Well, there's that chaos in front of the net and in front of Michael Simpson all night long here. And a shot that's broken, so that timing, it throws Simpson off. He's now off of his feet and, and out of his rhythm. And this one barely crests the goal line. Where is it? Bouncing and bam, just like that. A game of inches and a game of fractions of a second. Look at the chaos. Look at the traffic, the desperation. And a nice job from Krinkovic. Comes in and he gets his fifth goal of this Memorial Cup. No question, it's crossed. Not for very long. Two-goal lead, Seattle. And once again, another goal off the Siona davidson krinkovic line. Krinkovic's fifth of the tournament. 
And there's 10.15 on the clock for the Peets. Try and erase this two-goal deficit. You think they're going away, Vic? Not a chance. Not a chance. There's Jeremy Hansel. Up the wing. Lockhart to the line. Here's Govro waiting, passing off. And Millich takes this one in and hangs on for the whistle. Off the shot from Jacques Dubois. The latest goal from Conquer Kovic. 3 1 lead for Seattle. Well, what a tournament it has been for Kyle Krinkovic, but not just him, his entire line, along with Jared Davidson and Lucas, you know, they've been impactful. They have a little bit or a lot of everything. Kyle Krinkovic had three goals against Peterborough on their 6-3 win on Saturday night, and good job just being patient and high ice, and he added an empty netter. I believe that was a shorthanded goal as well, and then earlier it was Kamloops. Four goals in the tournament, make it five, a big one. This barely crested the line, but go to the net pays off for number 61. Five goals in the tournament. More importantly, his team is up by two goals here in the semifinals. 9.50 to go on the clock. This is where the Peterborough Peets will try and engage the pesky Peets mode that's kept them alive to this point in the CHL season. As Maia tries to push it ahead. Mayadova carries it in over the line, dodging a hit. And Beck throws it around the boards. Maya to center, picked up by Allen. Doc throws it in on the backhand. Simpson he got a piece, and Gavin White with it now. Up to Beck. Crossing through center right, Owen Beck drifting to the far side. Side up with Gunther and Allen. In front of the net there was Hoffman. Pass never came to him though as Hansel. Plays it off the boards yeah. for Schaefer. Schaefer drops it. Gunther shoots and off the glass. Back out of the corner. Lambert to the line. Korczynski. That's blocked. Off of the wing again. Lambert this time redirected by Gavin White. Avery Hayes in the corner. You notice how one shot for Seattle usually turns into two and even three, where they are so good at recovering pucks. That second quick, a loose puck, a 50-50, usually turns into a, a Seattle second shot. They've been really good at recovering. Up the boards and down the ice for Tucker Robertson. Quickly back up to the blue line. Avery Hayes touched it offside. Well, there's been no shortage of chances. 44 shots on net for Seattle so far. Two goal lead. Look at that little cross and drop and then the toe drag. That's just elite skill from Gunther. He shoots it through the screen from Schaefer. Listen, I've been impressed with Seattle and here's why. This game has had a different cadence to it. The first period was kind of locked down patient and Peterborough dictated that and I thought Seattle did a good job accepting it and playing the game they were in. The second period, they continued to push for offense, but they never pushed out a structure. And then the game opens up a little bit, and Seattle has shown that they have the ability to adapt within the game. They can play it however you want. I think it's the mark of a good team, a championship team, where you can handle the temperature of the game and the type of game that's required. Well, now, now they're the team that I think needs to press, but press with patience. They're up by two. There's a skill to play with the lead and the skill to close games out. 8-17 remain, and that is the challenge at hand for the T-Birds. Off the face off, controlled by Peterborough. Sawyer Minio. Yeah. Off the glass, Dubois gloves it down. Here's Zanetti. Punched out of the air by the blocker of Millich. Lockhart behind the net. Cam Govro. Plays it along for Dubois. Centered, and Jonathan Malie sent it all the way out through center ice for Donovan McCoy. McCoy right back up ice, ramped in. Millich sets it aside for Minio. Minio engineers the breakout with a pass over to Gustafson. Now Gustafson cruising in over the blue line. Pass Connor Smith tries to shoot. Passes off. Doc with a shot and a big blocker save from Simpson. Back into the slot. Nearly turned over. Back passes off to Othman. Connects with Stillman. 
fished away by the stick of Nolan Allen. Now Smith on the boards of goal, swatted down by the glove of Owen Beck. Clay stays moving along here as Hansel touches it for the Thunderbirds. And Nico Majadovic in the neutral zone off the hands, a bit of a speed wobble. As Donovan McCoy takes it in behind the cage. Through to center, Tucker Robinson. And on the wing, plays it out off the stick of Millich. And held in at the line. Not for long, though. Reed Schaefer elevates it back into Pete's territory. Slowed down through the middle. And Gavin White pivots back around at his own zone with Maya. Finds Tucker Robertson ahead. Plays it through. Gavin White shoots in a stick save from Thomas Millage. And Brad Lambert lost the handle. Shot from Yvonne and another save from Millage. Western Hockey League playoff MVP coming through again for his team. He's been sharp when they've needed him. Gunther off to Lambert. Lambert slows it down in the wing. Gunther pushed to the boards. Here Davidson digging for it. Up comes loose from Maye. Crossing through the neutral zone. Leads it in for Kuczynski. Siona bumped by Lockhart. Zanetti at center. Dubois couldn't take it. Pickford. Knock it over the line. Zanetti tried to play it ahead. Pete's almost had a two on one there as Pickford's got it. Took it away from Lockhart. Shoots it in. Okay, go throw under pressure. For Rothman. Pass goes right past him down the ice. Peterborough icing. Final five minutes in period number three. Two goal lead for Seattle. We'll try and advance to a Memorial Cup final on Sunday. The CHL on TSN is proudly presented by the all-new Kia Nero EV. Start your EV journey today. Into our final moments of the semifinal as we get set to find out who will play the Quebec Ramparts on Sunday. That is the 2023 Memorial Cup Final. With the start time, 3.30 Pacific for the pregame show for a 4 p.m. puck drop. Of course, that'll be a 6.30 Eastern Standard Time start for the pregame show. Day off tomorrow at 4.58 to go in the semifinal tonight. Pete's looking to try and at least tie this game up and force overtime. Came back just a night ago to beat the Kamloops Blazers, knocked the hosts out of the tournament. Reached a streak of four straight years that we've had the hosts playing in the final. As the Seattle Thunderbirds handle it down in their own zone. Gustafson run into by Maye. Sawyer Minio passes off for Allen. Adovic back in over the line. Plays it out to center where Luke Prokop is there for the Thunderbirds. Shot in by Hansel. Right now you can feel that cadence of the game. Right now it's slowed and it's because Seattle's dictating it that way. They're more patient now in the neutral zone. They're winning little subtle battles. It's how you play with the lead. It's how you close games out. Just under four to go. Here's Krinkovic off the boards. Bouncing puck juggled by Beck. Siona all over Gavin White right there is Beck. Flings it back up, wanted Stillman. Swung in by Hansel. Right now, Peterborough is being fed some of their own medicine here that they usually impose on other teams. And it's the lack of forecheck or a passive forecheck, a really sticky neutral zone. And Rob Wilson likes to play in the mud. Well, right now it's Seattle that's trying to get this game muddy and close it out just that way. Chase LeFave rolls it in. Sawyer Minio. Off 
off the boards. Miss Gunther. Gunther to center. Lefebvre loves it down. Quickly across for Avery Hayes. Avery Hayes off the boards. Makes a move. Tries to take the shot. And neither attempt got through for him. The Sawyer Minio throws it back out through center. Gunther pushes it in the rest of the way. He's puck behind the net. Gunther trying to center for Schaefer. It hit the net. And Gunther back into the corner for Sam Popovich. Popovich in a battle as Zanetti directs it off the end boards to Hayes. Sends it right off of Gunther. And it's quickly smothered by Michael Simpson. Boy, it is quiet in this building. You can hear your suit coat. It's so bright. <laughs> and it's exactly how Peterborough or Seattle will take it. Look at the four check. It's a 1 2 2. Not a whole lot of pressure, is it? Everybody's on the south side of their options, part of me, and playing it safe. And look at this right there. You have the puck in your stick. Gustafson strong. He gets bumped, but he doesn't lose it. He grinds, and his team comes in to support it. All these little details are how you slow games down, it's how you protect leads and close games out. Right now, it's Seattle transitioning into a new style of game. Well coached. And Peterborough have taken their time out. And Coach Rob Wilson with a message, assisted by Andrew Werner and Derek Walzer. Walzer's got the whiteboard right now. Drawing something up here down by a couple of goals, and you look back, you're going nowhere if you don't know what your goals are. And all these teams have set goals, and Seattle has made no mistakes about that from the very beginning of training camp. Their goals were clear, make the playoffs, home ice advantage, check mark, check mark, win playoff series. Well, they won four of them, ultimately get to the Memorial Cup and then win it. Well, they're minutes away from punching their ticket to the final where Quebec will be waiting and rested. You set your goals, you s achieve little steps at a time. It's been a long journey from September for all of these teams. Seattle two minutes and 27 seconds away from being one game closer to achieving that goal. Keep our eyes on Michael Simpson to see how long before he gets brought back to the Pete's bench for the extra attacker. By Adovic, Davidson, Schaefer, Allen and Hansel all out there for the Thunderbirds. Dubois to take this face off for Peterborough. Got Robertson, Hayes, Amaye, and Othman. So four forwards out there for the Peets right now. They are all in offensively. There goes Simpson to the Peets bench. Extra attacker jumps to the ice. It's back. Here's Schaefer through center. Curls it over. Majadovic to the net. And he scores. Just over two to go. The Seattle Thunderbirds are up four to one. Seattle set a franchise record in the regular season with 54 wins and they were a force to be reckoned with throughout the course of the playoffs. What a performance here tonight against that extremely admirable opponent and the Peterborough beats the net empty and it didn't take very long. It was Schaefer up the ice. Majadovic sheds the pressure, protects the puck with that left leg and slides it into the open net. 4-1 Seattle, 209 remain, and you can feel the inflated presence from Peterborough. Came back from a 4-1 four, or a four -one deficit against Camloose, but they had much more time than 209. This period started high event hockey. Felt like it could bounce anybody's way. Both teams traded goals. Brennan Ogden, Colton Dock going back to back, minute 13 apart, but Seattle have since pulled away. Under two minutes from advancing to a Memorial Cup final on Sunday afternoon in Kamloops. Kyle Krikovic through center, stripped to the park by Lefebvre. Off the J.R. Avon. Avon driving the net. Trying to thread it between his legs out in front. Gunther to the corner. Passes over to Brokaw. Stick knocked out of the hands of Kyle Krikovic. There's going to be a penalty here on the play. I had mentioned earlier is that it'll be all but over here. Lefebvre will take a slashing penalty to put Seattle on a power Peter play Burrell with a 25, minute 29 to go. Peterborough has 
allowed 40 shots or more now in four of their five games in this tournament. There you see the battle axe onto the stick of Krinkovic. They've been outshot now four of their five games. And it's part of their structure, but today it bit them where they were patient, but it was just too much too often from that shot mentality. The skill came to the surface for the Seattle Thunderbirds. They put up four. And they are a minute and a half away. Thunderbirds are 0 for 2 on the power play tonight. Hasn't been much of a factor with just one shot. Chase Lefebvre in the box. Here's Allen. Cross to Pickford. Now Doc. Back to Pickford. Allen has it. Seattle might just rag this puck as best they can. Quick shot from Doc. Carries well wide. Cross station comes for Doc again. Back through Myadovic, centering attempt off a leg. Myadovic goes down in the corner. He's wrapped up by Jax Dubois down the ice. Billich out to play it. What a match this is going to set up to be for Sunday. You've got a team in Quebec that is extremely patient, a lot like Peterborough, but they can counter on you quickly. They've got speed. They've got guys that can finish plays. Well, Seattle has proven that they can play in that temperature of a game as well where they can counter themselves and they can play a patient game. So we've got two elite, elite teams. They're going to show down for the Memorial Cup on Sunday. What a game that'll be. And Ashton McNally went down with Maya in front of the net. There's going to be a penalty here. And a bit of a mix up physically is Colton Dock drawing with a couple Pete's. Well, just the emotion percolating over here a little bit for Peterborough. This team has come a long way. Fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. Number 28, Seattle, minor penalty interference. So two minutes to McNally for interference. That'll even up at four on four. A little slash net front, some retaliation for McNally, who hasn't seen the ice a whole lot tonight. When you think about the 20 year olds, Victor for the Peterborough Pete's Avery Hayes, Sean Spearing, and Gavin White, who have now officially played their last game of junior hockey. And we talked about it last night with the Kamloops Blazers, led by Logan Stan Colvin. And their 20 year olds, it is not an easy thing to swallow. The journey you go through through the course of years, the things you learn on and off the ice, and an admirable season, to say the least, for the Peterborough, Peterborough Pete's. Sean Spearing is out to line up for this faceoff. Captain of this Peach team, overage defenseman. Like you said, Kevin, this will be it. This is the only junior team he's ever known. Four seasons, over 150 games with the Peets. Off the draw, Sawyer Minio takes it back behind his net. Seattle back in their first Memorial Cup semi in 1992. They were the host team that year. They dropped an 8-3 decision to Kamloops. Decades later, back in Kamloops, Seattle Thunderbirds are off to the Memorial Cup final for the first time in franchise history. Well, congratulations to Matt Odette and the Seattle Thunderbirds. And they've grown into this moment, have they? They felt their pain last year. They knocked off the Kamloops Blazers in the Western Conference Final, only to go on to lose to the Edmonton Oil Kings. And here they are a year later. They've learned from their heartbreak. And they have beat a worthy component in the Peterborough, Peterborough Peets. Thomas Millich was absolutely sensational when he had to be. Seattle outshot Peterborough 47 to 28. Both goaltenders were outstanding in this match. Michael Simpson has a lot to be proud of, along with his team who have played the underdog role all season long. Rob Wilson has done such a great job mentoring this group. Mentally tough group of young men who just came up short against a really good Seattle Thunderbirds team. And all the adversity the Pete's battled all season long has only brought them closer. And this will be a bitter defeat, but a tremendous accomplishment just to get to this point. Facing elimination four different times. 
And there you see Dave Lewis just talking to Seattle, I'm sure just to say, make sure the emotions are in check here, that they know both of these teams are fueled by passion. We saw the emotion before the game, make sure that there's none after it and sportsmanship being shown. Both teams through the handshake line. Sean Spearing is consoled by his assistant coach, Derek Walzer. It is not an easy thing to accept. And emotions percolate. You lay it all in the line. You spent five years of your life devoted to one goal. That young man right there played with a broken jaw. He put his heart on the line for his teammates. Sean Spearing broke that jaw in three places. And about eight days later, he's back in the lineup in the OHL Finals for the Peets. Nothing could keep him out of this Peterborough lineup. Now, I've said it before many times, and I think it's worth saying again, where the things you learn in hockey, the things you learn in life in this league, most won't go on to a pro career. That's for a select few, but because of what you've gone through in this league, you'll be successful in life. Maybe not in hockey, but you've learned so many skills, communication-wise, relationship-wise, dealing with adversity, mental toughness, preparation, I could go on. These young men are set up for success no matter what they choose to do next. No, Kevin, the Peets might have come short today in the semifinal, but at the end of the season, they're still champions. Champions for sure, and Rob Wilson, or pardon me, Rob Wilson had talked about not wanting to be participants. Well, they were not just participants in this tournament. All year long, they've been combatants. They've been great opponents, and certainly reason to hold your head high and chest out. Fermat Odette and the Seattle Thunderbirds. This is mission nearly accomplished. One game away from a Memorial Cup title. It's time now for the player of the game award. The award going to a player for the winning team. And joining us tonight to present this award is Catherine O'Brien, the brand manager for Kubota Canada. Tonight's player of the game from the Seattle Thunderbirds is number 61, Kyle Krinkovic. Well, Kyle Krinkovic for the second time in this tournament, player of the game. Had a hat trick against the Peets, player of the game in that contest, and he's added another to his tally tonight. Five goals in this Memorial Cup to this point. He had 39 goals last year for the Saskatoon Blades. What an acquisition he has been for the Seattle Thunderbirds team. So the Thunderbirds are 4-1 winners tonight in the semis. We are back Sunday afternoon, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern for the pregame show. It will be the Seattle Thunderbirds versus the Quebec Ramparts for junior hockey supremacy.